Uh, hello, everybody. This is me, Francisco, and my my good buddy Charles here for Sports Goofs number one eighty two. Charles, I have I have called this episode False Burgers. Oh, really? <clears throat> <clears throat> now I named it before you had your experience with burgers. But I wanted to tell you my experience with yes. what happened and why. I had mentioned to you on the group chat, to you and Andrew. Andrew's still around, everybody. He's just, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's a ghost. It's, it's we, October. We kind of it's spooky carry, season. you know, yeah, we, as the two Hispanics, was mm. it we say in the chat that you're the most ethnic one of us? But uh, as the two Hispanics <laughs> on the show, <laughs> um, we channel his words sometimes. So you might hear certain things chime in on you know, i i do have commentary yeah. of what he might say ucf actually Rangers. won a championship in 2017 there's hey there, yeah, you yeah, go. there, there he is it, it, He's, it, his spirit was running through me there you go yeah, yeah. and then there, i think that's there, what we're gonna we're, we're gonna roll with it charles andrew's a ghost and he yeah, possesses andrew's us every a ghost. once in a while you know. Andrew's a ghost. he's not guillermo from what we do in the shows even though every time i watch it i just see the similarities Daddy was wink yeah yeah like that episode <laughs> messed me up and is it bad someone say something what Watching that episode and seeing the dog Guillermo combo uh-huh. kind of has Andrew's hair a little bit. And oh, it, no. it threw me for a loop. Oh no! It threw me for a loop a little bit. I'm like, oh no, because that you know, I well, first off, I'm always obsessed with the show this time of the year. It started what a year and a half ago, and mm. I, I paused for such a long time. Season four wasn't really that good, and then no. you know, spooky season ended. Season four was great for Laszlo and Colin Robinson. It just destroyed Nandor's character. And I felt like Naja was just kind of there. Guillermo was fine. He's always a good buffer. But season five has been the proper approach. And season six will be the end of it next year, they say. So by next spooky season, I'll know. But, you know, I've always associated as Laszlo. And it's bad because sometimes it's more correct than it needs to be. I am not like – I am nothing like Matthew Berry's Laszlo. Hmm. I have to put that as a disclaimer because – out of them all, he's actually probably like the worst one when you think on it. Sometimes, sometimes. Mm-hmm. But you know, the Best Buy episode that that kind of the going to the beach episode, which is what I did last Friday, mm-hmm. and then just like the way he had known say things inappropriately and improperly is a Charles thing. He was a yes, lawyer. I, he was a lawyer, a bad <laughs> lawyer. Um, he's also <laughs> craving, we, you know, what what happened? We lost. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> one um one yeah so, yeah so th- there's a lot of pr- the best buy episodes with sylvie but i just like him because he's also like the purest and then last night's episode happened that i saw i'm like he's not as pure what he's like we're just, and he's a scientist mm. uh it, it's just so good but andrew to me was always kind of like guillermo to a degree mm-hmm. guillermo's like the straight shooter not yeah. not t- saying sit, setting a saying kind things straight. soul yeah yeah, yeah. I, by all with, means, with these, Andrew these is not two, a straight shooter. Living with Andrew these degenerates. Yeah. 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 A- Andrew circumvents a lot when it comes to counter arguments in the sports world. I've had to hear about the great city of Orlando so many times. And when I've gone straight to the point, he, 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 he just, you know, diverts from that. But, you know, th- there's a lot of it to it. He's the straight character, I think is the phrase that mm-hmm. they use. Yeah, straight man. And um, he's a sweetheart. Andrew's a sweetheart. Uh, the hair kind of reminds me a little bit, so that's why I was cracking up. I always like you to me, and you're gonna hate it, but you're very Nadja, I think Maybe. personality yeah. wise, where like how you can be like outrageous as a cultural thing, because yeah. especially this season, it's little axapastos, little axapastos, and yeah. then you you're kind of like our sisterhood of traveling Spanish foods and American countries and mm. states and everything like that of the Americas and the American cities. I, I mean, you yeah, I travel frankly, for work more than 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 you. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need to trust me. I, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. And then no one, thankfully, is Colin Robinson. I don't like <laughs> to think any of us is that boring. But Colin can be interesting and have those stories. So yeah. season five has been a good, 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 good impression. I feel like also you could be. You're not the guide. I like that she's become a main character. Mm-hmm. Um, towards it fits. You know, that's the thing where you got to get the different. Thank God they got rid of that stupid genie. And you know they didn't even mention that the genie was gone. It just one day disappears. There's just so much a season four. I was not a group on. We need to find a like a uh, Sean in the group. Mm-hmm. I want to know who would be. I think Sean would be me if I finally just lost it. <laughs> like Sean A. But yeah, so we are. The episode is fake burger. Yes, false burgers. False burger. False, false burgers. Burger. So alluding to well, I already mentioned that. I was I was on a work trip. I went to San Antonio, Texas. Mm-hmm. Not my first time in San Antonio. I've been there before. I I, I won my case, so I'm very very happy. 
for myself. So I did what I needed to do. I, I, I'm better than LeBron, who can't yep. win in San Antonio when it matters the most. Yep. And at the start of the NBA season, so there you go, uh, tonight. And uh, so we'll we'll see what happens with that. I, I don't really have much to say right now about basketball because it's basketball. We don't. I have things to say on it. Okay, well, we'll get to it. But I did want to mention this. So in San Antonio, uh, I was there for two days. And I came back on a red eye this morning. I am gassed still, but I have to be up now because if not, I'm gonna I'm not gonna sleep in the, uh, at night. And uh, first day, all right, I've got the entire day. I'm I'm there at like eleven o'clock a.m. So I've got the entire day to myself. I'm like okay, well, let's go eat something because I only had like a banana before I flew, and then uh, I went to get some Mexican food, right? Some mm-hmm. some. Uh, you know, not not like a, like a fancy restaurant, just kind of like a uh, like, oh. a, like a family, yeah, like a family establishment, right? Small, uh, you know, they had the the plastic utensils and everything like that, right? Just just that's kinda... how you know it's gonna slap. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, yeah, the, well, the, the plastic utensil. The they got the big. I, I tell you the picture, the big giant plastic bottle mm-hmm. or a plastic cup with the horchata inside, right? And just like a mountain of ice. Right, and it was good. It was good. Uh, it was uh, they, they put. It wasn't uh, so icy where it it diluted the uh, the sweetness of the horchata, and uh, it was called Mikasa. That's what it was called. Uh, the restaurant. So shout out to them. It was pretty good. Uh, they're surrounded by a bunch of little hotels around, uh, kind of close to downtown San Antonio, but not exactly in it. So it was. It was uh, just they have a nice, very, very nice little location. There was a barbecue place next to it too, and you had suggested to me barbecue, and I'm just like, I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it. Which I get, and I, I'm a big proponent of barbecue, but you, it's not something that you should have every week. I'm sorry. Right. It is clearly when you want it, and the spirit calls. Mm. I get Mexican all the time, but I'm gonna, my paralegal should be down in my main office with me this week and mm. on Thursday, and I think I gotta get southern pig and cattle. So this is good. This okay. Is cool. So I went there, got got some flautas and everything like that. Food was good, uh, and I, I enjoyed myself. It was nice, you know, typical uh, Mexican affair right there with rice and and refried beans and. And so a little lettuce and and some uh, pico de gallo and some guacamole and it was like okay here we go that that that, that hit the spot with the horchata, and uh, then I went to a museum, I went mm-hmm. to a museum and then I went uh, what did I do at, at night? Um, oh yeah, so at nighttime this is where the false burgers comes in. So I was you know I'm like let me get something to eat now because um, I wasn't really gonna eat much maybe some stuff from the hotel breakfast. I, I had the next day, but I was like, okay, let me get something for, for, for dinner. And I wasn't looking for much. I was just like, okay, let me just get like a, so like a sandwich or something like that. So I was looking, I'm like, okay, go on DoorDash, see what's, what's local. I wasn't looking for anything like, you know, like McDonald's or, or Wendy's or anything like that or Burger King. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, let me look. I was scrolling by, scrolling by. Okay, here we go. And I'm like, oh, this, okay, this looks like a independent establishment it's called wild burgers i'm like okay let me take a look at that and you have like, not mentioned this so am i getting first impressions uh you, you're getting yeah you're getting first because i i needed to talk to you about this, this is why it's called false burgers okay I, I didn't get a burger i got a chicken sandwich i had two chicken sandwiches which actually. is a, a francisco thing yeah i got two chicken sandwiches because i'm i'm not uh, i don't know i'm just not i'm not, I'm not feeling burgers anymore uh, as, a, as a human being right now but regardless i got chickens uh, I got a uh, crispy chicken sandwich and a grilled chicken sandwich. Right? I didn't get any tater tots or fries. They had all these options. I'm like, okay, never mind. So I got a fried chicken sandwich with like lettuce and all that stuff inside of it, and then I had the grilled chicken with like the lettuce and all the stuff inside of it with like a like a spicy aioli sauce or something like that. I'm like, okay, let me give this one a, a, a kick of something. Yeah, that sounds yummy. So I, aioli sauce if you use it right. Right. Uh, so I'm waiting, I'm waiting for it to come by. The people drop it off, and I, I knew something was wrong when they handed me the like I I thought I was gonna get two bottles of like a bottle of Diet Pepsi and a, a bottle of water, and I'm like no no they they said they ran out of bottles. I'm like okay, all right well, <laughs> and so they hand me the bag and I I get into my room. I wasn't really paying attention. I was just I was just tired and I, I wanted to eat something. I I open the bag and. 
you know what Wild Burgers is for anybody that's ordering on DoorDash or Uber Eats? It's Buffalo Wild Wings. They just mask themselves as like a different establishment and call themselves Wild Burgers. So it's a Buffalo Wild Wings. And I've I've seen this. I've read about it. I've seen YouTube videos about it where restaurants will change the name of their thing. So as to trick some customers are like, no, I don't feel like getting, you know, takeout from like a chain establishment. So oh, let me get this logo place. And you wind up with getting a chain establishment anyways. So they tricked me. They Is that like me. Wings by Chili's? Because I've seen that happen sometimes. Well, But they don't have buy anything. It's just called Wild Burgers. And I just thought, oh, well, I'm in San Antonio. Yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, I'm in Texas, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, well, I'll get some good burgers or good whatever. And okay. no, it's Buffalo Wild Wings, something I could have gotten in Miami. And it, it, it pissed me off. I'm like, well, they bamboozled me. I've been spackledorfed. And and I just I, need you to do the Nandor shout, Guillermo, <laughs> Guillermo. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so true now. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, and so, um, so I I'm like, okay, fine. Buffalo Wild Wings. Let me let me get. I, I open the first one. It's the crispy chicken sandwich. Has all the stuff that I asked for on it. I'm like, okay, cool beans. Uh, let me let me get a bunch of that eat that and i didn't get any fries or anything i just got the other second chicken sandwich i'd rather that than than fries or, or tater tots whatever they had there i opened the second one charles all right it's a grilled chicken sandwich yes okay came I mean, with two buns you know I, as, I as a, a sandwich should i have a comment go ahead i need some clarification on and mm -hmm. please what's the point of ordering a grilled chicken sandwich from a fast food would you consider it's fast food or just sports bar? Well, I wouldn't have gotten it from a fast food establishment had I known that it was a chain restaurant or, or, or a chain a casual, fast casual restaurant. Yeah, I thought I was getting a legitimate local establishment in San Antonio called Wild Burgers. I feel like that should be banned from anybody is if you're going to get chicken, it needs to be deep fried or dunked. If it is... <laughs> grilled what are we doing here what are we doing here right well what are, I, we, what are we doing here yeah but some, but some, I know where some you're places have from. some good you know grilled burgers the wendy's has great grilled burgers if you grilled, oh, chicken. grilled chicken sandwich i'm sorry so I mean, it's, it's not bad you're, it's not bad at all i'm not saying it's bad but what are we doing here uh, hey look look I, I wanted two different varieties of chicken i i don't so that's what i was looking for and i'm like mm -hmm. okay fine uh, oh hey Okay, I'm eating this, and I open the second sandwich, and it has nothing on it. No Ew, sauce. Is it, just a, is it like a homemade? No just like sauce. Bread, cheese? No cheese. No lettuce. No tomatoes. Nothing. They just stuck a piece of chicken in between two buns, and I am like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm already, I'm already pissed off that I, I was bamboozled by both wild wings. And then they decide to teabag me some more. You got by not needs, man. Exactly. And I'm just like, this is this is a travesty. I'm, I, this is, it almost ruined my night. I'm just like. And, uh, and I, I got to tell you. I'm glad I got the first sandwich because it would have completely ruined my life. I just had, a, had that sandwich with like some fries. But there's nothing worse than what you're treating yourself to meal-wise turns out to not be good. Case in point of what yeah. could have happened today. Right. But I cannot read for that, but I've been there. It is the equivalent, and I know this is going to be kind of grim, and I know you guys are going to mm. think I'm dramatic. It is the pain of, like, losing a loved one. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> because you always have that trauma of, yeah, I can't go to, you know, Wild Burgers because this is what happened to me. They lied. You carry that resentment, that mm. pain, you know. Oh, your little kid cousin that got ran over? Same thing. Wild Burgers. Just telling you. Yeah, I'll, I'll put this on the screen here. One second. Did you take a picture of it? Did you out them for I, it? No. Well, I I went on. I think I got it from Uber Eats. I went on there and I just told him like, "Hey, um, this isn't right." Like you guys, they they literally put a piece of chicken between two buns and nothing else. And I and, and, I, and you did it. I looked at my. You I, didn't come out with a firearm. I looked, sure enough. I well, and it's Texas. I could have gotten one easily at a Walmart. But yeah, I I looked up my order. I'm like, did I do this wrong? Did I, in my, my tired brain, accidentally 
not mark anything as far as toppings. And it's like, well, it's impossible. I saw the receipt. I'm like, okay, I marked legitimately the these uh, these things on my sandwich. And so uh, Uber Eats gave me two bucks back as a credit. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, okay. You I mean, can get it. You can get a chicken sandwich from Wendy's for two dollars. Sure, I can. get yeah, It's probably the same else. good taste. Yeah, but but um, now that I'm looking at now, and it's like it just uh, uh, I'm finding out that Wild Burger for anybody that's ordering from DoorDash or Uber Eats is just Buffalo Wild Wings, and they have like the logo and everything. They have a, a specific logo. Everything like that. I'm seeing it right now on the screen, and I'm not seeing it yet. Uh, here, it's like it says Wild Burger, and then like, oh, in le- yeah, l- you can tell letter, by that white and yellow little letters letters on the bottom it says by Buffalo Wild Wings. Like it's, but it's on the the freaking Uber Eats thing doesn't show that at all. It just says Wild Burger, and so That's I got bamboozled completely. Yeah, and they're in tiny yeah. letters too. It's not like Buffalo Wild Wings Wild Burger with giant letters and the big giant Buffalo logo. No, no, no. They they hot. They, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings has that Buffalo logo, and they have nothing like that here. So it's that very bright white that's a dead giveaway. Yeah, but I I I, I just thought I've gone to Wild original. Wings more than enough, kids. Yeah, trust me. No, and I know the color scheme. I know all that stuff. Stuff, but I I would not have have been bamboozled like that before. I just I was betrayed, and now and now I know. I think you've done Buffalo Wild Wings as a non as a non sponsor, but I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. anti non sponsoring them. So well, you don't. They're no, back to zero. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a listen. You're gonna you defend know, them. You're gonna defend. I'm, I'm, this I'm gonna defend them. You're gonna I'm, defend them for ruining my night. Who? Well, whose fault is it? It ain't my fault. It, I'll it, tell you that is much. It, is it Wild Burger's fault? It is no, their it's fault. Uber's it's Buffalo fault. Wild Wings' it's fault. It's Uber's fault. It's all their fault. I, I'm sorry. You know, you'll have certain things that are house brand, and then there's like store brand, but then there's also a third party brand, and you get that. You get that with. Food. It ain't a third party Wings. though. It, it's Buffalo Wild Wings. It's Francisco, their stuff, and you they have you have two pockets, and if mm. you ain't making money on both pockets, just keeping the one, then you're living life poor. Mm. I that is what the American um, Buffalo Wild Wings, the American dream, the uh, American dream. I'm I'm saying. calling out to every. This is a this is a PSA, a public service announcement to everybody. If you're if you're if you're if you're hankering for something tonight and you want to order something and you want something original that's local mom and pop shop type of thing, it ain't Wild Burger. They're tricking you. If I you're if you're a businessman or woman on a trip right now, just like I was, and looking for some local fare, and you see Wild Burgers, you're in Texas, you assume like, hey. All right, this is a, a local establishment. They have no indication that they're Buffalo Wild Wings, the, the sauces and everything like that. Nothing to indicate that that is that establishment. They are tricking you. They are tricking you right now. And other restaurants are doing it too. They cut Chuck E. Cheese, changed their pizza into something else on, on DoorDash as well, just to, to make money during the pandemic. So it's it's happened before. But I didn't know Buffalo Wild Wings was doing this, and I need to warn everybody. Because so they're gonna funny. they're gonna ruin your you're gonna ruin your night but, by giving you a terrible sandwich. But it's the sandwich itself, not the establishment. So but it's also just... the establishment as well. They, Charles, I was not, I was not consenting to eat Buffalo Wild Wings. They 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 uh, have you ever ate they hurt me. Buffalo Wild Wings they, before? They, I've eaten Buffalo Wild Wings, but I was not hankering for Buffalo Wild Wings. They, they, I just no means no, Charles. I did not want them, but they, they forced themselves the upon me. The show. Um, <laughs> it's not that is that they told you that they had a car and they had a charger and they had a lot of money. Really, it was Mama's car, mm. and that they live with the folks, and then you know they got three baby mamas, and that's on you. But that, that ain't on me. That on is you. not on me. That is not I'm, on me. I'm sorry that you've been singing no scrubs a lot in your life when really, <laughs> you know, you should have been like big pimp. But I, I get it. Sure. You know, to a degree, I still a reasonable Buffalo person Wild. in my situation would have would have this would have happened to them as well, including I, yourself. Well, I, first off, <laughs> first off, 
you're not wrong, but to call me reasonable when you know <laughs> the lengths of things. I drove 20 mm-hmm. minutes outside my way in a conference in Tampa to get Colombian food that I had I I had scout. I'm not when it comes to my food adventures, I scout, man. Like you know this. I don't I don't settle how tired I am. I say I want it. By the only the time that happened with North Carolina is when I went to the diner food and that stuff messed me up. That was the point where I'm like, I can't spend my money on three course meals a day, you know? So I had to change it. But remember, to expect mm. me to be reasonable with food, especially <laughs> since you know what I'm about to reveal the follow-up on false burgers, <laughs> is a little naive on you, which explains how wild burgers, which is wild wings, screwed mm. you. Because you should have smelled something funky with how? wild in there. How? Buffalo wild I'm wings, wild burgers. I'm in Texas. And corporations the, are spread the across state. the U.S. from the north to the south, They're the little, east to the west. Literal King of the Hill episodes about burgers and steaks and Bobby being in a college team to, to you know identify meats and stuff like that. Like, I expected a local fair, and Buffalo Wild Wings came in and ruined it. So, all right. You know, in life, you, you know what the beautiful thing about nativity is? is that when it burns you you're gonna grow up and you need to grow up bobby okay you need to grow up you, you should have got into it you've been to texas first off but wild wings wild burger i would have sniffed up it, it, it's not like it was titled mild burger or you know just spicy what? burger. they don't have a trademark or, on the word or, wild or lunatic burger they don't have a trademark on the word wild yeah, but Wild Wings is very associated to Wild Burger. Where? You know, when? You got, you, how? If, what, what's your – the only other thing that's familiar, bud, is the Wild Wild West, right? Jim West. Despite and I'm in Texas. Despite, and I don't want – not a <laughs> – The Wild Wild West. That's what that... – You know, she's killing him, but damn it, he's mm. made some bangers with his music. Uh, um, anyways. Yeah, you got you got duped. You got duped by the guy who has, you know, three baby mamas, doesn't pay child support, and is borrowing his mom's car. That's – that, that's – all it's right, you, baby. We're, no, it ain't on me. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. It ain't on me. It's on granted. To be very fair, <laughs> my, my adventures to go into Wild Wings is just because I can't go to the house all the time, and they make some decent <laughs> Long Islands, and I usually just get, you know, like a sandwich, a chicken sandwich that's coming. In. I think yeah, I'm just more the, disappointed. Yeah, but they actually put the stuff that you want on that sandwich. I'm assuming. And you don't go in there because with the unlike, expectation unlike that... you millennials mm. and uh, Zoomers who are lazy, I, I go into somewhere I sit down, <laughs> which is a lie. What's every Friday? I'm like, hanger. I'm just going to pick it up. Mm. You know, I don't, I'm not going to give them money for beer at the establishment. I just want the burger. Yeah. We, this is life. Life's supposed to be this way. Life is supposed to be good. And then it's supposed to hurt you in the worst ways. Yeah. And it's not like when it burns, when you pee kind of hurt, there's nothing worse than like the meal I ordered was not the meal that I wanted. I'm so glad I got that backup sandwich before. <laughs> right. Because it was. Isn't that, completely isn't the destroyed by night i would have been like ah this is a travesty let me and, let me and, ask but, you this yeah is it worse it, this happens a lot in certain fast food establishments at certain time periods is it worse to order something and the meal be disappointing which is your situation at a fast with, food place well any restaurant or fast food but uh, this happens more to fast food for me than actual establishments even though i've had it happen establishments but i'm already home or to pick up something and it's the wrong order. Because now, if you notice your pickups, or they'll show you the box of what's in there. Right. It's the only craze that's happened like last year. Because mm-hmm. I think they realized, hey, we're kind of lazy. What are we going to do? But what what is worse for you? That it tastes bad or you got the wrong order? That it tastes bad or that I got the wrong order? Because sometimes you get a little, you know, miracle. But when you're craving something. So I want to put that modifier on the second one. When you're craving okay. something. So when it, I guess when it tastes bad, you got what you wanted, but it's not at the quality that you wanted it at. Yep. Right? And... And then the other one is you didn't get what you wanted at all. And it could be because, you know, you go to a sit down and then they're out of that particular thing, which has happened, Flanagan's. Um, okay, but they at least warn you when it's like, hey, we're out of, you know, this. And it's like, okay, yeah, fine, I'll, but, I'll change you know, my order. But, but, so that's different from getting it wrong. Like, no, I'll, I'll the, the it, worst part is it's... Well, what it's, do you think is worse in the end of it? I think it's worse and it, it's, it's dependent, right? Like, if they get your order wrong, you're at a sit down restaurant and you're actually there, you can notify... You know, the server and be like, hey, uh, this is not what I wanted, right? It's like, okay, fine. And they'll, you know, fix it up or get you what you wanted. Whereas if you are doing the, 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 the food delivery service and you're waiting 30, 45 minutes, an hour maybe. Which and I think you, happens a lot with Uber. Eats, and you're, right? you're, yeah. you're looking on the app and you see the guy driving. It's like, oh, he's almost here. This is exciting. And you're, you're just, you're hankering for it. And then you open it and it's like, I, I ordered. I ordered chicken wings. These are nachos. It's like, like, 
and and yeah maybe you like nachos but it's not what you wanted i think that's the more disappointing scenario this out is of a sports two. show everybody um yeah, sure, i know mm-hmm. can we say something <laughs> what i'm gonna say something super controversial go ahead nachos are fucking overrated they can be it depends, it depends with fast you go to I feel like with fast food establishment nachos, I am never happy. Well, Taco I'm... Bell doesn't make good nachos. Oh, uh, not not fast food. I'm sorry, sports bar equivalent. Uh, I don't want no, to. No, no. I don't it's... want to call it whitewash franchise. Even Flanagan's, which I love Flanagan's, you know I do. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, it's just a lot of wannabe queso with right. the jalapenos and the meat, whether it be chicken or beef, just in the middle, not spread out. I rather just dip it. Right. I rather just dip it. I rather just. I, I, I'm I'm so sick. If you get of, nachos. Of fighting this. Yeah. If you get nachos. You have to. It has to be from a legitimate place. A legitimate Latino <sighs> place. That like I, I that's what I got at the food truck in Los Angeles when I came late 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 at night, and I hit the spot and that that thing was just filled to the brim with meat and pico and and everything cheese like it was fantastic. I I uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that, but. But I, I hear you on the Americanized sports bar But it's version very, of nachos. it's very popular. Right. I can't explain it. And I have fun against, you know, Friday, and I had them rock and roll rolls. Those are delicious. I think, I think people have the the idea that it's better than what it is. And I because mean, it's cost convenient, but I could just buy the bag Dostinos <laughs> myself. There was a, there was, a, have you seen, a, I think you should leave on Netflix. I've heard of it. But okay, I, I mean, it. you should. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you might like it. It's like there's a comedy, but there's a bit about nachos. I won't ruin it for you. Uh, yeah. So, but in any case, where was? Oh yeah, so yeah, I think it's worse Wall if they get the your order wrong because like I've had disappointing versions of, you know, stuff I get like you know Wendy's or McDonald's and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wendy's not so much. I think they for the most part are solid, but it, I, I I think it's more disappointing. You order your food at delivery service and they get the order wrong, and then you have to like do the whole spiel on the app and try and convince them to give you your money back. And maybe mm-hmm. you cross your fingers, maybe it's a it's a free meal, and you get something that at the very least you can eat. See, uh, you guys make me feel like grandpa because if it's fast food, I don't really want to order it from an app. I just you know, well, I don't order fast food from the app because I know people are actually way more expensive to order it from yeah. the app than just go either use it their own app. You have to use their own app. And I think it's cheaper that way, or you have to actually go and get it right. So, yep. but if you use like DoorDash straight up and go to McDonald's, they'll they'll tack on like five, six, seven bucks extra yeah. for no reason whatsoever, and it's forcing you to use the McDonald's app anyways. Yeah, DoorDash, Uber, they're shills. That's all yeah. they are. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, so there we go. And then San Antonio, uh, I had food at the beer garden, uh, which was uh, two Look sausages. Good. Yeah, it was a Polish sausage, a bratwurst, and a big giant pretzel and uh, some pickle. And that was it. And uh, just because my, my client was like, he's like, I, I'm, just, I'm just sick of Mexican food. I'm like, yeah, I, I can get that if you live in Texas, I guess. And so he's like, oh, let's go to the opposite of, of Mexico, Germany. And so that's where we got <laughs> And, um, and that was good. That was, that was solid. Uh, but aside from that, like, uh, maybe Charles Barkley is right about San Antonio. <laughs> never been. It's never been a place that I've kind of wanted to frequent. You know now that, I mean? yeah, I went the first time and I, I had a good time because it was the first time I was there, but like going the second time and walking the river walk, I'm like, yeah, this is like their only thing. <laughs> so I, Texas is a very weird state. It, it's Austin. You keep it weird in Austin with the concerts. But even in Antonio. Austin, I, I haven't like, if there's nothing like that, if you're not going to like a concert or, or just like to get plastered at a bar or, 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 you know, watch Longhorns lose at their stadium. Like there's nothing really to do in Austin. It's kind of boring. Can, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the thing. And like Dallas, the same thing. Like Texas has to start making stuff to, to actually do because they're it's not like they have a beach or anything like that they do have beaches but it's it, it's not really their thing when you think about texas so like houston houston is kind of eh. i don't know i don't I, I, i'm shitting on texas that's too but uh but it, i mean listen i'm always here to shit on texas one sure. especially since i've been subjected you know, the to only a city is El Paso. alcs El, El Paso is actually the only city I, I legitimately look forward to going. It's your favorite uh, place. Yeah, I mean it's good food, and I don't know. There's just a vibe to it that I actually like. I'm like, okay, this is this is what it's about because it's different than everywhere else. I feel like Dallas just feels like okay, I've been to some place like this before. 
But uh, all right, we're at 31 minutes, and Charles, uh, this is still False Burgers, and so let's keep running with that theme. So you want me to do the intro on it? Sure, because Uh, I I had my disappointing experience. I don't know what yours is. You have not mentioned whether it's on one side of the spectrum or the other. So what I take pride in for us in the show and I don't know if I should take pride in it, but I feel like it's like how the guy could, it's like that episode of South Park where Kenny would do anything for 20 bucks and <laughs> yeah. you know, that's fine. I'm the fast food guy. And you know, it's so weird to say that considering the fact that I've been good for what, almost a year of just having fast food once yeah, a month. Been and a I can for the whole year, actually. I, I do not count Pollo Tropical because it's not, it, it's quickly made because it's pre cooked. But guys, you know, if you consider that fast food, you can't, you're a stickler it's on every. It's a cover. glorified cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. And you yeah. know what? When I when I want tr- pollo tropical, damn it, I want it. And yeah. I become very bland there. The same way how I am with Chipotle. Just give me the rice, the beans, and the meat. I don't really need anything else, and that's mm-hmm. it. Because you need that. But in the chat, the last couple of weeks, there's been like some new stuff, and somehow, some way, some fashion, I found the king of burgers burger king and apparently they have because it's spooky season even your fast food's going to do this whereas wendy's is usually my go-to to break that once a month spell or kfc because we love the kernel up in this ish um you still got to get something there but apparently hmm. apparently burger king is doing or is currently doing now for their spooky season ghost pepper burgers and the chicken fries Mm. and i'll tell you now those chicken fries were the reason why a lot of weight was gained during law school because they're delicious i can't explain they actually taste basically bad by themselves but you can't say no to it because it's the dipping sauce burger king has like the devil's sauce in it i can't explain it when it it comes to that stuff it's always very good and i remember just getting that and then like the uh bacon king or the stack house or whatever with the chicken fries is great and usually the bacon king i think that's what it's called is my go-to or the smokehouse king something right i I don't want to go into bird king menu but i first off i should start this i'm injured it's a rotator, either strain or tear. We're not going to go to the doctor. We're going to give it like a week and a half of no gym and see where it comes up because it's pretty manageable. If it's really bad, we'll go, right? That's how I'm going to start this. I've been exercising by jogging for like an hour, walking, jogging, and I hate it because my knees like to remind me I'm 34. But mm-hmm. Tuesdays are typically when I do any kind of treats anyway against it. And we had the show. And this is a time where I come back to being Mr. Tryout, Mr. Tester, Mr. Test Subject. I was that when we had Mr. Guinea Pig. I was that when we had the um, KFC Hot Cheeto Sandwich, which Mm. I liked, if I recall. We are that when we did the Ghost Ranch Wendy's uh, Chicken Sandwich, which I absolutely love. The Hot Honey. The Hot Honey as well, which is another one that was great. Um, I was not crazy about the Nacho Burger. It was too crunchy. It was like a six. Yeah, probably your five, review five, dissuaded five, me from getting it. I and I, I can't, I can't lie to a brother like that. And I, it's been a bit since I had the Burger King, so I opted to go for the Ghost Pepper um, mm-hmm. Whopper. And on and, the screen, I've got uh, the report of the week and his review of uh, review bra with his yeah, uh, bra. The Ghost Pepper, so we, so people can see it. As yeah, you describe it. And for me, like, first and foremost, this is how we start. You either have to like Whoppers and not like Whoppers. And a Whopper is typically what? The meat, the lettuce, the tomatoes, you know, the yeah. onions. They do a lot of mayo on it. I'm not a Whopper guy. I, I think it's the same thing how I feel like about the Big Mac. Granted, I don't eat McDonald's like that. You know, it is my least favorite place, I would say. I like some of the variety. My favorite kind of Whopper was the Angry Whopper. That was like kissing Jesus for me. Mm. When they did it, it was the jalapeno. It screamed, it bit your lips. It would give you like little lip blisters, man. It was just that good. I love the hot, my mouth's watering. Mm -hmm. So I got it. I literally ate it an hour ago. And here is my assessment of it. I like it a lot. The bun is colored to be orange, but it is not flavored. And that's what I was expecting. Because I know they did it like with the Spider-Man bun, but I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that for that. Um, coming from there. It's 850 calories, but I had the fries. So what comes with it is your typical stuff that's in the the Whopper itself. Um, yeah, the lettuce, tomato, have... the onion, the mayo, yeah. and ketchup. 
But here's the thing. It did not taste like a Whopper to me. Because if I'm reading it correctly on the ghost pepper Whopper, because I'm on the website, it has the ghost pepper cheese, which was good. So it's in the cheese. The crispy jalapenos to add the flavor. Okay. But it did not have any tomato, onion, pickle, lettuce, mayo, or stuff like that. Like there, there was some flavoring, but I thought it was dill pickle. But it didn't have like some of those add-ons. And usually a Whopper comes like premium. It's like, like you know, they don't ask you when you go for a Whopper. Yeah. But it was the meat. It was bacon. It was oh, okay. um, the cheese and the crunchy jalapenos. Or maybe it was dill pickles. You know, whatever the flavoring is. So I, um, man, like the, you bit into it. And I feel like sometimes the burgers at Burger King could be hit or miss. Because either they're too greasy and uh, like slimy or they're too crunchy. And mm-hmm. sometimes they're just right. It really just depends on what time you go. But what's the rule of thumb for fast food if you can get for dinner? Get it at 6 o'clock. Right. That right. is when it's probably going right to be before dinner fresh. rush. Right. Right before dinner rush, right before the dinner rush, it kind of go from there. But the bun has no flavor. It's just a bun. It's a bun, you know, but I, I don't mind their bun. So the bun and the sesame seeds are nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's, it's a typical bun. the default one, but they just, they just color it a different color. Yeah. It, it, it's a default bun. But even if you look on the screen, I think, uh, okay. Mr. Revere kind of showed it to you. There's things that are lacking with it. You bite it. And really it's just, it really just tastes like the meat and the bacon. And then the, good kick of the heat that hits you in the mouth it's not overdone with because there's no mayo so it's not overdone with, which is good because i feel like the whopper is too mayo-y that's why i don't really do it i'll do like the bacon king or steakhouse king whatever they had coming into it because too much mayo causes what my shit to mm-hmm. to like swing out is that your one oh, you got two that, that's sure. two that, that call, no it's two that causes it to slide out which is annoying right and first off, side note, can we stop putting too much lettuce in, sa- in burgers these days or chicken sandwiches? Like you're getting re- – you're not even giving a head of lettuce. You're doing a four-head of lettuce mm-hmm. in there, but it's almost close to a head of it. The because economy is rough, of- Charles. They need to find a way to make your burgers look bigger. Yeah. Well, just dice out the lettuce. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've started becoming like – I feel like I'm going to be cured. Shredded lettuce? Would that be better for you? Sure. Yeah, okay. because you, you really I think we add in the big lettuces for the cu- belief of a crunch on a burger or a sandwich. Uh, for the chicken sandwich but really what happening is like flanagan's i had the same situation you give me the slab of it that just got ripped off like the stock man and mm-hmm. i wasn't fun i wonder what he gave it um because i'm I, I don't know his name he always creeps me out but i i respect him because oh, he review bra review bra he's yeah, just he sort of the port of the read review bra i don't i don't think anybody knows his name well you know i'm gonna call him like you know i'm gonna call him lurch i mean um, bodybuilding.com calls him review bra so i'll, I'll go with him as review bra but i <laughs> i found it had because if you're just giving me a burger that is the meat which was good today bacon which i like their bacon you know bacon everywhere is always good on a fast food and then the ghost pepper sauce which had a good kick putting the uh the closed captioning so if you yeah if you want to see it you can see him like weed a little bit no it's the but he wave of the heat, heat is very persistent from the moment yes okay. so after you take like the second bite in and but it doesn't burn your mouth okay. and it's flavorful so so this is because uh, with these fast food establishments, right? Yeah. Where when they do spicy, quote unquote. Yeah. We we kind of have to temper our expect. Like for people who are in the spicy stuff, I'm not like the crazy spicy where I, I, my my mouth starts to swell and I I need to go to the hospital type of people like like yeah. that. But I like a good enough kick, and to the point where okay, maybe I need a glass of milk, mm-hmm. but maybe not, right? And I'll just like let it. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll power through, uh, but and that's you and me, right? Yeah. But mainstream, normal fast food or these fast casual restaurants—a a level above Andrew—is the heat index of what is appropriate for a lot of fast food places. Right. It's just like okay, you're it, it makes it it tickles the senses in your taste buds, really, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you you don't really have to like start sipping soda or whatever just to try and uh, survive. And, and you like the most I've ever had is like maybe you get one little bead of sweat and that's it. And but, then you, there's me who's done the atomic from hot wings or hot ones. Okay, right, right, right. So, so where on the level of that it's a seven. would you call it? So overall, the burger is a seven. Okay, With and the, the heat, heat, it's a good kick. Okay, it, it's, it's like kick. because the thing is, you it's don't there. stop to eat. Maybe you, yeah, because maybe there's a few times you, and even say, I would describe it as a flavorful spice. That's what a uh, review bra mm-hmm. is doing. And I agree with that. Because after you take 
um, a few oh, bites of it. Crisps. There we go. There's and one. that's I thought it was dill pickles because remember our uh, Honey Hot at Wendy's did dill pickles, right. and I was like, fine. But when you take like every third bite, you take a sip of your soda, and that's an appropriate kind of heat. But you mm. want to keep like munching on it, so it doesn't overtaste the sense. But you still taste the burger, you still taste the bacon. I, I'm a fan because this is what happens. Why I hate um, how Burger King will do this because they'll find something I like and they just get me. <laughs> you know, they did it with the chicken thing yeah, that we had that we were man. both in love with chicken. Out. Yeah, that was summer. That, that, that was <laughs> unhealthy romance. You know, bad romance, Lady Gaga. That was that they did it. I always love the Angry Whopper. I will all like if they said Charles Angry Whopper. I'm like I'm gonna go right now. You know. It, 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 it spoke to me because a burger with jalapenos, now you're talking because you're not doing any kind of thing weird with it. You're not stacking. If you look at a lot of places, they, they sometimes the intensive incentive of fast food, aside from the meals, you could double patty the meat. And I'm like, I don't really need that if it's like flavorful enough as it is. Um, and, you know, the one thing I'll say is this Burger King has not shortchanged me. It doesn't talk a big game. Fellas and ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some, some guys talking a big game and then it mm. comes out and it's like very small. McDonald's does that. That's why I don't eat at McDonald's. True. Uh, what, McDonald's whatever. doesn't really do limited time stuff very well. As far I as mean, like the hot chicken sandwich, like, the one time it's I overhyped. I would say they would overhype. Yeah, it. Like, people would overhype it. It's just like this is not. What yeah, it is. compared and, to like what Wendy's does or Burger King. Well, who, well Wendy's. Know. So Wendy's, you know, if I had to rank it on the things I've had that's ghost flavored, mm-hmm. Wendy's ghost ranch chicken is just a love. I love it so much. I think that was what I had in August or September as my one fast food. But I'm glad I tried it for us. Seven out of ten. Remember, what's the whole basis of fast food? It can never be an eight. Because if anything is an eight, what's the whole point of eating out and making stuff at home? For ten dollars, you just get something better. That'll kill you. But mm. yeah, yeah, man. Like Burger King found something that I'm interested in because it made me want to eat its meats because I haven't had it since they would abolish the chicken for a while. Always love their onion fries or onion rings. Always love their zesty sauce. It's just, but I was happy with it. So when you got shortchanged in your false burger, I had a truth burger. <laughs> nice. You know, a Very little good. bit of a Verdad burger, you know, coming into it. Okay. Seven out of 10. You should try it. Seven out of 10. All right, Seven then. 10. Do they have a chicken variety? They don't, which is, <sighs> they brought back chicken wraps, which was, I was like, hello. Really? Everybody's got. Remember when McDonald's had the chicken wraps? And you're like, yeah. Well, it's, I think it's cheaper to produce. Yeah, everybody's cutting back on a lot of stuff. So, and these fast food places, because I mean, like, how much is this? How much did they charge you for this? That's, it was that's only. I, I got a whole meal, so it was eleven bucks, which is fine. Okay. All when right. a gourmet burger is going to be about seventeen, eighteen bucks these days, and I got a medium size, so medium fries. The single bur- and that's why I appreciate Wendy's because if if you go with meat, they'll give you an option of a double or God forbid a triple. Listen, I have to have a really bad day. Like I have to lose everybody in the fire for me to contemplate like a triple. <laughs> you need the triple. You need those arteries yeah. to clog. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just saying. But 11.49 for the medium um, fries, drink, and burger. That's worth it to me because I'll feed you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I want to see the review, bros. He's 8.1. He gave it an 8.1. Okay, fair. It, 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 I, him and I are on the sequence because it's not a lie. Mm-hmm. You think about it. If, it's, if he's going 8.1 on 10, and you remember, really, I can't go 7 on 10. So, truthfully, if we go on my 8. Oh, he's doing the chicken fries as well. Holy crap. I heard the crap. chicken fries were good, too. Yeah. And I'm like, and I had to really think on it. I'm like, no, because for me to do the ghost. So, mind you, your boy still spits up blood every now and then from the acid reflux. And if I did <laughs> the ghost pepper uh, burger and then I did the chicken fries, I'm just going to be, like, spitting up an image of Jesus in my sink. So, we, we could not whatsoever do that. 8.1 out of 10. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's high quality. Because it, I think it's quality because it's really bare bones. It's saying, do you want meat? Do you want this kind of meat? And do you want cheese seasoning with like the lightest amount of vegetables? Because what is a Big Mac at the end of the day? Mm. You know, what is a quarter pounder? What is a typical Whopper? They're overshadowed by their condiments and they're over because it's the island dressing on the Big Mac and they're overshadowed really by the add ons to it, which is a lot of veggies. And at this point, I'm kind of like, I'm like, nah, I'd rather be like pure Viking and be like, you know, it's not worth it to have. The tomato and the – I don't like pickles like that. And then the lettuce even, which you guys can never do. I'm like, pass. Yeah. Well – What's the last fast food you had? The last um, – what was the last thing I got? I think um, 
think I texted it to you. I was like, Charles, I need to get something. I think I went to, I think I went to Wendy's. Yeah, yeah. Wendy's yeah. Is I, safe, I, I, I went to Wendy's. Yeah, I think I went to Wendy's and just got a chicken sandwich and that was it. I'm waiting for checkers to win me back. I have not had checkers in like two years, man. It's just yeah, yeah. It's been so a while. bad. Now we just got to get that franchise. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. Yeah. Well, we're at 46 minutes. So we're a sports show, everybody. I yeah, promise. Yeah, this is this is the good type of show. So uh, let me see. Actually, did I write one day that? I'm gonna get my fast food draft ranking. Like, that's always been the dream. What, three years now I've been espousing that? Yeah. If not, we'll have to just do one of those tier lists. Uh, yeah. I'll look for one, and we'll just we'll go we'll go about it that way. That might be the easiest bet. It's just so okay, complicated. So we can talk about that. Okay. Well, I think I could talk about this for at least five minutes. So, uh, the NHL. Um, it's been like a week and a half or so, and you know, the mm-hmm. season's gone on. And, you know, it is what it is. And much like baseball, like the first – 20 games some teams play a little bit above their heads and then uh, other teams kind of go back to earth and other teams kind of normalize and uh, play up to their potential instead of playing down to it and uh, right now the the only major thing of discourse in the NHL any sort of controversy at this point is regarding the NHL's policy about specialty nights and celebrating whatever because mm-hmm. some players last season, seven of them decided that they hate rainbows and the covenant between God and man that he won't flood the entire earth. Anyways, uh, so one of the things with, with this was that the NHL mandated that you cannot have multicolored tape to use on your stick. Now, the only reason that this is happening, Charles, because... There's the, the Pride Nights. That's the whole entire controversy with all this. And pretty much every NHL team has has had a Pride Night. As much as, much, as much other NFL and NBA baseball teams, what have you. Just they, they all have their own token, whatever. And so the NHL, usually when they had their Pride Nights, they'd have, you know, the 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 rainbow logos with the uh, the warm ups and during the games because they don't wear specialty jerseys during the games but it's very rare for teams to wear specialty jerseys for a single night like in baseball but uh, the players would use multicolored rainbow stick tape it's like okay that's kind of whatever you know that's kind of cool like like I think for breast cancer they'll have like a pink tape and you know all that type of stuff right well the NHL is like no you can only have one solid color. Now, it meant you could have any color. I mean, I didn't, I've never seen players use more than just black and white, to be honest. Uh, the, the only time I've ever seen any other color is for these Pride Night stuff. So I'm like, okay. Is this in relation to the tweet that you sent me that I'm looking at now? After yeah. Consultation? All right. Yeah, so uh, recently, and I forgot the name of this player, but he plays for the, the Arizona Coyotes of all teams. Uh, he decided that I'm just going to – Use the rainbow tape on my stick. Good for him. So the NHL has, honestly, they didn't really lay out what would happen to you if you used the tape. They didn't lay out whether you're going to get fined, whether you're going to get suspended. And so it was kind of ambiguous and up in the air as to what would they would do. What would that look like? And, well, somebody, someone within the NHLPA it's like okay, Arizona Coyotes. Um, I think I think it was probably like the safest player to do that for. Uh, it wasn't like their star, as far as I know. I don't know who is on the Coyotes to be honest, but they're I just remember it was the frat boy from last year that got drafted. That's all I know is oh well, the problem child who's no longer the problem child, right? Well, he's no, no that that guy didn't get no. He was drafted by the Coyotes and then like got undrafted and then the. Uh, the Boston Bruins picked them and Ooh, then they I unpicked them. Yeah. Remember it was like a whole thing. He was making fun of like an autistic child. And I remember he made fun of it. I didn't know what the fallout was. Cause I know we I'm all make fun of him. He bullied him. him. It wasn't making yeah. fun of me. Well, he was basically bullying him and yeah, torturing him. Fucking asshole. Uh, that's five. Uh, so, um, I used two there. That... Yeah. So, uh, anyways, he decides to use the tape. It's in Arizona. It's not a high profile place, but I think it's a safe, like, okay, 
This is a safe team. And at the very least, it did get eyeballs. Now, he used it. When you think of the, the hockey stick tape, Charles, I, I'm assuming you're going to think that it's at the foot of the of the hockey stick, right? The, the blade uh, where, you you know, where they, they get the puck and they shoot, right? Mm-hmm. But but players also use stick tape. Like I, I have stick tape around the 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 top of the the handle of the uh, of the hockey stick, and so he decided to put it there. So it was visible enough. It was far enough down the the shaft <laughs> of the stick. I'm, I'm ten years old, and uh, but you could still see even when he covered it with his glove, and it was noticeable enough to make a statement. I think I think all out of all this is an actual statement. By him and I think the NHLPA, because for the most part, for the most part, I think most players were were in a transition. The players that were complaining about this, that were open about it, are players on the older side of the NHL, which uh, is probably like twenty eight, considering how old they draft dudes. Well, I mean, guys are like eighteen years old when they get drafted, right? So yeah, so the NHL, but it's full of. <clears throat> Zoomers, the NHL is full of Zoomers now. I'm I'm ancient. You're ancient, Charles. But the NHL is full of Zoomers, and the older millennial players from but fuck Saskatchewan six <laughs> were the ones having problems with this. Seven because so. Saskatchewan feels like a, a curse word itself. <laughs> oh boy, we're not gonna like that in Regina. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so. Uh, I, whatever I've insulted Canada so many times. I, I, at the very least, Charles can insult. Me. Listen, if your players who are <laughs> you're you're the most represented in hockey, mm. and if your players are holding out with bigotry, which really it is, I'm I'm a I'm a sling some mud. I'm gonna throw some dirt in your eye. But it it, it the entire scenario with all of this, just the NHL putting this mandate that you can't do this, just slaps. It's a slap in the face, not just to the people of the pride community, but pretty much everybody. Which is a sport point. that already has a hard time with inclusivity on race alone. Exactly. And you see me. I'm I'm a Latino hockey fan. Very. We're, we're, there's not many of us, Charles. There's not many of us. I. Uh, there's not many NHL players that are of Latino background. The fact that we have one of the best players in the entire league. Who's who's a Latino is is saying something without a Latino last name, correct? Yeah, so. I mean his, his his father's side, but his mother is straight up Mexican. Like you look at her, she's like, yep. <laughs> so, uh, and there's not many other you know black players, and it, it's not a lot. There's not. It's a very small percentage of players, and um, even smaller for guys that are legitimately like the best of the best in the league. So it's disappointing for for fans like me or fans like I mean you know, my, my good buddy Roy Bellamy. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep saying that. Uh, also, with that, follow like, Roy on the Twitter. Follow yeah. us on Twitter. F J O J R Charles the True Dan mm-hmm. Free Holy Sports underscores Goofs and then Roy's. I'll get in a second as I shill mm-hmm. to the masses, but you know he follows Francisco on yes, Twitter and Panthers historian and F J O J R just Panthers historian uh, and Marlins history as well and and Marlin on the big time yeah I'm gonna get he's on the at, show, Charles. at Roy Belly anyways at Roy Belly and we like Roy I think I follow Roy and so Roy. and I'm speaking of the Panthers are honoring Anthony Duclair who's first game back since he was traded uh, to San Jose who was part of the, the Stanley Cup Finals run last season. But he's also a, a, a Canadian, African Canadian player um, as well. So he's he's black in the NHL, and, and and last season there was a lot of strides to for inclusivity. I mean, you saw Udonis Haslam uh, repping the Panthers a ton uh, last season as well, and that's like that's that's our guy down here to represent South Florida sports, and and uh, it, it not only killed that sort of inclusivity or diversity initiative by the NHL and the NHL players, but it also was killing other things that, that uh, I've said this before. They, they killed the, the um, breast cancer awareness nights. The Panthers had one and they had these, uh, these, these fantastic uh, warm up jerseys, but the players can't wear them on the ice for Wombus anymore. 
And usually they, they wear them and then they, they auction them off to raise money for X foundation, X charity, right? And it's, it was always nice. They always had a customized crest uh, by some artist, and it just looks awesome. It's a cool, unique thing that the NHL does, and a lot of teams have, have some great stuff. The Vancouver Canucks have fantastic. I think they're one of the best at it because uh, they, they have a lot of influence from you know the, the, the First Nations background up in Canada, all types of stuff. In South Florida, the Panthers were putting a lot of you know Latino flair, everything like that, with with the Panthers. It, it, it was something that you were starting to see amongst a lot of teams, kind of tapping into their local communities, and you you kill that for a sport that I wouldn't say desperately needs more fans, but in comparison to the other sports, yes, it does. It's an easier way to get international reach beyond True. the North American continent and possibly Russia. Yes. Uh, uh, well, I, the NHL, much like all the other sports, wants to has to have an eye towards expanding. It's all about growth. The NFL is in London, right? The, the NBA is having games outside as well. The NHL has games like in Europe and things like that. Baseballs and you know, Mexico games and stuff like that. Japan. So these teams want to do that, but you need to find that in an in and sort of sort of way you can't have this stuff killing it. So this guy does it with the tape. He puts it on the NHL comes out. It was, it was a few days, Charles, that this, mm-hmm. this passed by. It wasn't like an immediate thing. Everyone was waiting to see what would happen because nothing was said. No and what was he, the rain, what was he using the pride or uh, the pride what? tape on the yeah. handle of his stick. So it was, just visible enough and he's just like yep i used tape <laughs> so he's just like he didn't really uh, just he's just like i wanted to use it so he was, wasn't anything like that he's just like I'm, I'm gonna use it i feel like using it i'm gonna use it he's, and so we waited for days we were trying to see what were they gonna do were they gonna find him what was gonna happen and if they find him i'm going to assume it would have been a problem with the nhlpa because as much as they might have members that felt exactly like I'm going to out them like Mark Stahl and Eric Stahl and Jordan Stahl and James Reimer and all those those players that made a fuss. I named four of we the seven. We can't remember the I guys. named four of the seven already. Yeah, we can't name the guys. Probably Tony D'Angelo as well. That's five. So I, <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I, so that was, that, I was trying to make a comment, and then the sneeze came in because we can <laughs> smell bullshit and we're allergic to it. Three. Oh, man. Uh, so that's I, I think I've, I've named most of them already. So that's that's you know, amazing off the top of my head already. But uh, it w- it would have been a problem. And so what are they gonna do? Are they gonna fight them? They, they like, you know what? That's how you handle it. You don't like it with this on the other guy's stick. Swing hands. Well, that, yeah, but as the majority of players I think are cool with it. I mean, as much as like you hear like all these the rock songs and heavy metal and stuff like that in the NHL arenas. You're starting to hear other things now. You're starting to hear hip hop and things like that because players. Surprised a lot of January Sixers don't like hockey. Shit, did I say that loud? Um, five. Yeah, well, maybe it's because it's too Canadian for them. It's too. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, it's like too, they don't like beer too much for their brains. You know. I mean, look, I can understand not liking Canadian. No, they like too. shit beer, like Pabst Blue Ribbon, and you know. Oh, yeah. So yeah, true. well, they don't drink no Bud Light no more, so there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should drink Bud Light to begin with, but, you know. <laughs> Anyways, um, so the NHL came out with a statement today that says they're not doing anything, and players can put whatever stuff they want on their sticks. Whatever color, however many colors that they want, they could put it on their sticks. And uh, it's uh, we'll see. We'll see how this, this goes down. Uh, it still hasn't changed the warm-up jersey thing uh, policy. I don't know if a team is going to, because that's a team thing. I don't think that's that's a thing a team is going to try and do themselves. But I feel like it'll be it'll be like they'll 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 wade themselves through that. They they already got through this, and maybe they'll rethink it, and it'll come back out of next season or a couple seasons from now. I think they're going to walk that one back too. I, I think the it hard makes part absolutely is... no way. I think sense you lose everything, including the military appreciation nights and stuff like that, that the NHL loves to do, especially the Panthers. So I don't, I don't understand it. I think my issue is that it takes too long to delegate a solution. You shouldn't have to wait till the season's end or the beginning of the next season to make this termination. It's really, who's it really going to anger? Who's real? The players are on it. Fine. Don't play. Then you get fined. Yeah. You know, Right? You want to make a statement? You want to be a hero? Go ahead. Yeah. 
you know, come so, into it. Yeah, it's a, it's a uniform. You wear a uniform. You like just like any other job. So there you go. I, I worked at Payless. You think I'm ever gonna wear khaki pants ever again in my life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're at an hour, Charles. I think that rolls right into the word from Ron Swanson. There's more non-sports, everybody. Uh, people, places, things, concepts, what have you, that we've been enjoying over the last week. So, Charles, I'll start because I think you know where I'm going to head it. Mm-hmm. All right, so the background music for tonight comes right from Sonic Superstars. And that is my non-sponsor. Mm-hmm. It's a Sonic is it Bas- Sonic Frontiers, Francisco? No, 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 it's not. That was that was last year. But Sonic Superstars, now a year, almost a year later now, and I honestly think the reviews from other people, other outlets, I don't agree with some of the things that they've said, or at least I don't agree with like the the level that they've scored it at. I've seen a lot of sevens overall. I mm-hmm. think it's at least a 7.5 to 8 game. Um, maybe an 8.5 if you really love replaying Sonic games and you're an actual Sonic fan like that. I'm basically going through it a second time with a different character right now. I haven't gotten to the true, true ending of the game. But you know I'm going to get there, Charles. I'm, I'm probably going to get there either, not, uh, probably uh, either tomorrow or, th- or Thursday. Uh, I'm going to get there at some point so I can get started on Mario. But uh, yeah, Sonic Superstars came out. And uh, honestly, it's it's the, the fact that it's it's held me, despite the fact that I bought Mario. I've had no complaints three days later, either. Uh, three days later, mm-hmm. because uh, you, if it was bad, I think you, you would have seen me be compelled to, all right, let's just get started on Mario. I'll get back to finishing off this Sonic game later on but no i've stuck with it because i feel like it is a very well constructed 2d sonic game in a 3d art style i would say 95 percent feels like the sega genesis games or sonic mania as far as the physics and everything is concerned like they've for the most part have nailed everything there's some things in there that i'm like I feel like that would have handled a bit differently, but maybe it's just like a a, a stage thing. But uh, regardless, or maybe it's something that they can patch because I, I haven't really noticed any sort of glitches or anything like that 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 uh, calls to question the, the quality of the game. Uh, it's very well made. The graphics look great. I'm running it on my PC at 4K 60 frames per second. And you can play as four different characters, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. And Sonic, of course, runs fast and has the the drop dash from Sonic Mania and uh, and everything like that. Knuckles can glide, and Tails can fly, and Amy's got her hammer. Um, and then y- you play as a different character later on, who has uh, different wall climbing abilities. She's a lizard. It's a new character that they made, and uh it's kind of it's pretty lengthy charles on my first run how much did i say i think it was like six hours six and a half hours uh my first playthrough and that's That's with yeah that's with me for a 2.5 er yeah yeah um that's me uh, not blasting through the levels because uh, i wanted to take the initiative to go and seek out the chaos emeralds and 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 do that and try because that's the only way to get to the true endings of these games. And so I, I took my time to go and find them. They're, they're kind of off the beaten path for the most part in these games and in, in the levels here. I, I don't think they were, they're not as obscure as I think. Um, Sonic Mania? I think, I, I think they would be around the same level, but they're not as obscure as some some other special stage uh, MacGuffins in other 2D Sonic games, mm-hmm. I would say. And they're not as hard as the ones like in Sonic Advance or whatever. So it's just that you find the giant ring like in Sonic Mania or Sonic 3, and you, you go inside of it, and then you, you play the special stage presenting like a a 3D thing where you, you're basically with like a grappling hook, and you got to grapple your way on over to the Chaos Emerald while avoiding some obstacles. And uh, the people who reviewed it say, oh, I couldn't, I had to do the, redo the, the, the fourth one like like 20 times. I'm like, I, 
did it in four. So I uh, just restart. Get good, son. Yeah, just restart the level, go find it again in like 20 seconds, and you, you, you do it. So, and Sonic levels are not long. Six minutes max, it actually, feels like. These, these levels, I would say, are some of the longer 2D Sonic levels I've ever played. Uh, they, there's really? a lot of things happening with it, and it, they're very large levels. They don't feel as constrained as like Sonic 2, or um, they feel, uh, I feel like they're longer than Sonic Mania's levels. And that, that's because I, I, maybe it's some of the 3D stuff, some of the stuff that they've added. But I, I see myself finishing levels on my first run, looking for Chaos Emeralds, and doing all the things that were coming up. Because they have some like bonus stuff to get medals, and you, the medals are for you to to trick out your little robot that you use in multiplayer. It, but mm -hmm. aside from that, you don't really have to do them. Uh, the special stages are in their own spe for the chaos emeralds, their own thing. But um, uh, for for uh, me exploring everything, I was finishing levels like seven, eight minutes uh, long. So they're yeah. long levels on the first run through. Because remember. You know, Sonic is about You're looking for speed. Yeah, yeah, replaying, trying to speed up, trying to find different paths and everything like that. But once I found the Chaos Emeralds, I didn't really feel an incentive to look for anything else because I'm like, all right, let's finish the level. Um, but in the end, I, I think um, uh, the, the the levels are for the most part well balanced. I, I don't think any run too long. The boss battles are very unique. Uh, they're different than they handle in Sonic Mania. You have to go through certain sequences, you know, the first phase of a boss and the second phase of the boss. You can't just spam them and it starts slamming them like crazy. So speed runs are a little different with this one. You have to wait for certain segments for, for the boss to kind of uh, expose their weak point. And so, um, but I, I, I didn't really find any boss, boss battles that were like, all right, this is BS. So I think they're very well well crafted. The only one I, th I would say the final boss for this game is one of the harder ones that I've ever played in a 2D Sonic game. Maybe the hardest, actually. The one that has a secret ending, or just well, well the the first story. I haven't okay. tried the true ending yet, but the 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 last level of this game is actually pretty brilliant it's a very unique thing that i don't think they've ever done in a sonic game and i don't want to spoil it for anybody yeah because i'm getting that for sure but i would suggest that you finish that level as quickly as possible <laughs> because you're gonna need the time to defeat the final boss and the final boss i think was the only one that i felt like had some bs scenarios but the thing with this Sonic game is when you collect the Chaos Emeralds, it's not just to ultimately get Super Sonic and Super Knuckles and all of them, right? As you get each Chaos Emerald, you get a different power-up. So unlike the other Sonic games where you found the power-ups in the stages and they were like in the boxes and you got like flame and you had bubble and electric. No, this one, you have a weapon wheel just like in any, any 3D shooting game. You use the right stick and you can activate a different power. So, like, you have one that you can, you turn into like a, a uh, you turn into liquid and you can go up waterfalls and you can breathe underwater for a limited amount of time. Uh, they, they run out of it. Uh, and once you use it, that's it until you reach the next checkpoint and then it refills. Uh, so, you have eight different, I think, yeah, you have. Uh, seven, yeah, seven different power ups for each chaos emerald, and then once you get the final one, you get the ability to turn into super or whatever. Um, so that's the eighth power up, and I think for the most part, they, I, you don't really have to use them. I, I think they're only really useful when you're caught in a bind or you're trying to explore and look for the chaos emeralds. Uh, that's and uh, find the giant ring. That's the only thing. But aside from that, they and they'll suggest to you like at certain points of the level, okay, uh, press X to use this power up because the best one that you can use at at that point. But really, the best one in in the game, I think, uh, there's one that uh, you turn into like a a flame and you can kind of keep shooting up and up as long as it goes. So you can use that to traverse higher levels. And then the other one is the one that slows down time. Hmm. That one's a really good one, especially for the final boss battle. And you have to save it 
and use it like right at the end. I think the third best one is the one that you you bring out a ton of your like a ton of clones of yourself, and they can attack whatever enemies and stuff um, there. So uh, th- that's really the only ones that I think are legitimately very very good. And um, yeah, yeah, and and of course it has the Sonic stuff where. If you go too fast and you don't know the layout the level, you run into something, you lose all your rings, and that's kind of like, ugh. But it's par for the course. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, um, music is good. Uh, I think they're. I think for the most part, most of the tracks are pretty good. I think they brought back uh, some of the guys that worked on the Genesis stuff and the guy who worked on the Mania stuff, and it's kind of like a mix of different composers. So you'll, if you're a Sonic fan like me, you'll notice like certain influences from certain other games and yeah uh yeah sonic main or sonic uh, sonic superstars i think it's uh i think it's worth everybody's time uh it's 60 dollars. i don't know if anybody wants to pay 60 dollars for this if you're not a sonic fan but sega's probably gonna put this on sale in like a month <laughs> you know uh a month or two so it should it's how i long. struck with uh frontiers so yeah, yeah. So it, it won't be long, but uh, it's very good. And I, I don't know if they'll do an update with any sort of DLC stuff for as far as levels are concerned. But I, I'm, I'm enjoying it very much. So, yeah, promo code. Um, Got to go fast. All right. So mine is appropriate, I would say, in comparison to some things. You know, we, we know that we're going to work with it we're going to talk about we've talked a lot of food lately but you know it was it was a very holistic weekend that, that's how we'll call it no it is not spider-man 2 we know the rules i can't non-sponsor anything or give a review until it's completed 15 hours in though and um i'm having a good time with it you know i i i, I had my trepidations with it because i thought seeing an eight on ign and game spot was just gonna kind of ruin it for me but i am gladly saying that so far it is not that, but let us talk the meat and potatoes of what my non-sponsor would be in this instant. Because you know, Friday, man, I had a day off. You know, I had a day off. I, I took off. I was gonna get myself, you know, some sun. I was out on the beach for four hours. I was gonna listen to an audio book, but it's not that because I'm not done with it. And when it comes to audio books or books, I gotta see how they stick the landing before we we get to anything crazy, right? And I had to go kind of like, all right, I'm going to eat, but what do I want to eat? How am I going to eat? What, what are we building in here? How are we setting it all up, right? And am I going to go to Hangar? I've been going to Hangar a couple of times. I went to Old Faithful, especially since I knew I just picked up Spider-Man 2 for free, mind you, because it's me. And I understand when people say, well, Charles, you did trade in, so it's not necessarily free. And I'm allergic to bullshit because I'm about to sneeze. That's six. One second. Mm-hmm. It's not coming. <laughs> Excuse me. I should have muted yeah. your mic, but I'll just leave it. Yeah, there. it's all right. Let them hear my season. It's fine. <laughs> I'm a real person, but um, you know, because here's the thing about some of the games I trade. I trade in Spider-Man One, Miles Morales, Resident Evil Three Remake, and then like a few other stuff. All those were like gifted me, except for one thing. So the truth is, I really made money off of stuff that I never owned. So yay me. Anywho, bringing it back to the point of you know conversation is we got spider-man but i was like you know what man it's one of those days let's uh let's treat ourselves here we gotta treat ourselves so i got myself old faithful a south florida staple mm-hmm. i got myself some flanagans and what did i get at my flanagans and mind you flanagans a lot of good things happen you know you can get your drinks if you want to get your drinks i actually don't drink at flanagans because i really just want the meal you get the ribs you can get there's chicken stickers which are basically just chicken tenders but very tasty you get their chicken wings which are good you can get their surf and turf you get their burgers you stop by for their lunch special which is you get a drink you get like a six dollar meal which is valuable in today's economy right you get mm-hmm. their captain Dra- jack you know or is it am i thinking else they both have good desserts or you can get you know some of their appetizers what i chose to get because i knew i was about to break the seal day one patch you because sometimes i like to wait on games so they can get patched up but i couldn't wait on spider-man 2 because god knows i'm trying to avoid spoilers i think i'll be done by the time i actually do have an update with another 15 hours but i digress so i said all right i'm getting flannies and i'm gonna get the texas burger which is a classic staple so that's where my complaints about the lettuce come from mm. i'm evolving man if you ever had a texas burger it's like a half pound burger with 
tumbleweed onions, blue cheese crumbles, chipotle sauce, or whatever the buffalo sauce is, with other toppings and bacon. And you can never say no to bacon, man. It, it just really makes it work. Mm. But I also decided to add on an appetizer because I am a fat ass. Mm. Eat. And I decided to get my what did i decide to get i got the rock and rib roll appetizer so i'm literally biting that and then going to my burger and the good thing about the rib roll is i knew i was gonna eat enough to like survive me <laughs> for a couple you know for another day or two and fellas it was just mm. delicioso it was so casey have you ever had the rib rolls have you had the rock and rib rolls it's just oh it's just so good it's like an egg roll that has like you know their rib meat in there along with other stuff and use the ranch dipping that comes into it it's just mm, my mouth salivating now at the thought of it i was a very happy camper no disappointment at all no refunds necessary you know what i mean so then the burger did me fine i was bloated i took my enzymes but you can never go wrong with old faithful when you're hungry you want a variety of food you don't particularly know what you want and you don't have to go to a wild burger to get it you just end up going there and then you're just a happy hermano as they say so mm. i would venture to you guys go get you some flanagan's old faithful tasty you have a whole diversity and variety of stuff that you can have and you're just going to enjoy it so that's my non-sponsor for this one promo code uh you know eh, we'll be, we've been saying for a bit old faithful short mm -hmm. and sweet okay yeah. yeah it's been a bit uh, i need to go back i, I mean I, I, I went to the beer garden to celebrate, but maybe I should continue the celebration in Miami. Yeah. For, for whatever. I have to go back to the gym tomorrow, Charles. It's happening. <laughs> I need to go back tomorrow. I need to go back Thursday. I might have to go on Friday, and I'm definitely going on Saturday. I need to to make up for me being sick and me being out on a work trip. There you go. I have, I have, I feel, I feel like all the gains are going away. <laughs> Like I'm, it's 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 sad. You're becoming me. Man. You're becoming me slowly but surely. I, 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 I look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I'm not pretty anymore. So, <laughs> so yeah. You're like, who is this ugly, this fat ass man? Uh, nine. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's see. We are at our 18 minutes, Charles. Uh, game seven of the NLCS is tonight between the Diamondbacks and the Phillies. Uh, the Rangers won the American League Championship and beat Houston. So, and they beat them decisively <sighs> last night. At least Garcia is him right now. I'm going to have plenty of comments. Don't you worry. Uh, I mean, what do you want to say? Let's talk about it right now. Because I, I, mean, I, I didn't watch the games. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a sports show, everybody. Uh, I've only, I've really just been focused on hockey and the Florida Panthers right now. And I've ignored baseball now that the marlins are out and it's it's kind of dissipating for so me. that's kind of been my vibe because what have i been saying on the show and the other aspects i'm having a hard time finding a team to root for mm. and i'm all for philly and houston yes i know houston it seemed that i hate but i was all for you know the revenge aspect of it why because it's good for business i think if you can build actual rivalries outside of you know, regional or division regional divisional and that's really what it feels like i mean in the al your best true rivalry is you know yankees You're red sox and they both staticky charles oh i'm sorry i probably touched on the camera now i can hear you but it's it's is it staticky now it still sounds staticky what about fine before now? there we go there we go all right so you know al it's yankee red sox and then i feel like nl doesn't even have anything real for the longest time it's definitely not in the nl east even though they try to tell you that's something in the nl uh central because the battle mid nl west it's dodger just owns everybody until the, the playoffs the, i mean now i mean the last two years i would say it's the phillies and the braves as the only as the premier right now national league rivalry between two teams regardless of whatever because the dodgers haven't done anything nice. and haven't proven and their asterisk is getting bigger with every year that they don't win anything They're, the central division is eh right it's, it's out of the cardinals or the brewers and they're kind of both boring and then yeah it, that's really the only one the mets are a joke so so yeah and then the marlins are just kind of there <laughs> so yeah it's not really much of anything else 
the Giants have kind of disappeared, and really the Diamondbacks are just a surprise. That's the only thing that's going on with that. So, and, and that's yeah. the thing is you couldn't get me interested in a lot of stuff that's building in. I understand Charles. I understand, and this is the Andrew argument, and I can feel it because he's a ghost and he's channeling through me. Mm. Oh well, you know, if it's the same two teams all the time, it's always boring. Blah, 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 blah. Because Charles is always saying Houston and the Dodgers, and it doesn't have the Rays, right? Mm-hmm. And but my belief is that the best teams get you there. And just because Houston had injuries and they came in with a third best record doesn't mean that they were the worst team. And the same thing with the Dodgers. There could be some teams go there, but the, how do I want to say this? Plan fa- playoffs is not for loyal fan bases. Playoffs is for mainstream casuals to get into, mm-hmm. and it even takes people who have diehard teams such as the Yankees, the Marlins and the Rays to want to support other teams in this juncture. Cause truthfully I was out of the race. I had nothing to watch. I didn't want to because I couldn't galvanize myself to people. You got me on the idea of building into it. And so when you're giving me on the NLCS one, I watched like an inning of the diamondbacks and then they got like launched up by Philly. I know they're going to game seven. Now I'd probably rather just watch wrestling. I think there's a story for Harper finally to win because I got, I got to find like a storyline. I'm a wrestling fan. Right. Mm-hmm. And you get the storyline of like, you know, because everybody always gave Bryce shit for 10, nine, maybe for leaving Washington when he have every right to, they don't want to pay anybody. If you saw how they treated Soto, I think Harper was right to leave in every aspect. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, God knows everybody was going on the field, goes, well, Washington won without him. And blah, blah, blah. I would have taken the money and run to, bro. And look what he did. He produced worth the contract. It's above that, in my opinion, where he was an NL MVP, went to the World Series last year, and is on the possible cusp of getting there. Pitching doesn't, you know, affect it. But I like that narrative. I can't get behind Zona. It's because the lack of interest and appeal, and I need I, somebody. They I have, think, yeah. Go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, they have one star player. And, when I watch him, I was like, okay, because my problem with baseball is, and this is going to lead to the Rangers aspect. So I'm going to steal it a little bit longer and then I'll, I'll give it to you is that you tell me somebody's good and it's good because of how their season's going. And if they don't perform it in the playoffs or if they're doing good in the playoffs, but they were just kind of eh in the regular season and the years to come, I'm not going to buy them as the next wonder kid. Cause they even said that about Soto and Soto mm-hmm. really, and they even said that about like Javi Baez as well. I'm giving you guys who are legitimate names that won World Series rings. I've gone to I so do the 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 you know it, the scouting still out on him in my opinion. Like I think he did, he did fine this year, but I, I don't know because they're still so young and they're developing. And it's how you see pitchers. But Javi Baez wasn't doing much, and now he's in Detroit. And then we get to Dal- Dallas Garcia. So I watched an inning and a half of the ALCS, and I saw Jose Altuve hit that home run to give Houston lead five to four. And I had the PTSD from 2017 kicking mm-hmm. hardcore when I was eating my flan against Barry. I said, nah, the same for me, you know, and it proves that Dusty, Dusty's dusty. So we're glad he's got his one ring and went and that Houston's just a completely, extremely unlikable team, but I can't get behind the Rangers because they did everything. I- I'm saying right now on my soul, mm-hmm. they're replicating 2009 hire a competent manager. Cause at that time, George Rowdy was a competent manager when we got him put in some heavy payroll on some pitching and some hitters. Granted, they put a lot of payroll on some old pitchers, which they shouldn't. They're not even, they might win a world series, man. And Grom's not even going to be there to collect it fully. He's right in the bench. Right. And then you get like some stars, but then you get to Dallas Garcia and then Andrew, how do I want to say this delicately? We found who he loved during this, this uh, series, right? He's going to kind of gravitate to get behind the sport because he loves baseball a lot. Mm-hmm. And Adolis Garcia, and he's on this tear. What was Adolis Garcia doing the last several years, though? And I know people are saying, tell me you don't watch baseball without telling me you don't watch baseball. I don't watch Texas because they've been in mediocrity since they fired Ron Washington for being really cool and liking cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and you yeah. deserved all that punishment. But, you know, you really you went on this tour de force of a teardown where you wanted just to be slightly above mediocre. You hired Bruce Bocci, who is making me feel – accurate when i said he's a top dog and some my friend was just like you my other friend was like well you know um he he uh you know his wins lost records i say they purposely tank who? in baseball who uh, bruce Bochy? yeah well i didn't say that no not you but i that was a collective galvanization okay of what i was I mean, having gosh man he was on the san diego padres i mean sheesh for so many years that's 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 the fact that he could he took them to a world series is a miracle in and of itself you know? yeah 
and he, he's getting there. So the thing about Dallas Garcia, because I brought the stats, because I, I am, this is a sports show, sometimes I do get analytical, mm. where, you know, because I also say because I've been spurned by big multi-million dollar hitters that are coming in. So, you know, and mind you, they haven't gone to the playoffs in the whole duration. So what he's at right now is this year he's at 39 homers. Very good, obviously. 27 homers last year. 31 homers the year prior, the batting average, you know, it's whatever, depending how you want to read batting average, a 245, 250, and 243, right? So he's on a tear now, but Houston's pitching's always been very suspect. There is no Zach Wheeler on that other side, you know, with uh, Christian Javier, yeah, Verlander. Garrett, I mean, Garrett Cole's gone, you know? Garrett Cole's gone. So what is it that you're going to see? And who they have played leading up to it is in between. I'm not knocking the kid into it, but I know better, and we all know better to kind of fall in love with one guy who's mashing. Granted, you want a masher. There's a reason why we build into it, but I'm not going to put all my um, eggs in that basket, especially when I think you really saw the deficiencies because is the fact that Houston would I, – I, I hate the fact that I'm defending Houston. I want to vomit as I'm saying this. Is it the fact that Houston was – you know? too tired the pitching was too bad because the game was lost by the first couple of innings when there was a lot of guys just getting on base some mashers and stuff like that i'm not saying garcia did not contribute but we've seen it too often in baseball chris bryant as i cough real loudly and say it where you get this kind of success for about two or three seasons and they just fade into the abyss and I just can't get behind it. But if Bruce Bocci wins, I feel absolutely correct because that means it's three teams taking the World Series, four rings in total. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I can get behind the narrative of Texas versus Philly. Um, I mean, you could probably sell me on it because I think it Texas winning it reconvenes the blueprint of that you should spend in free agency. Yep. When they, were, they lost 100 games two years before that. Mm-hmm. They lost like 90 games last year. And then and, they're and like, I, hey, let's but, just – fix our holes by spending our way out of it. And it's about also getting the right manager. And I find it so funny that Bob Melvin's now going from the Padres to the Giants because that means the That's Padres true. don't think highly of him. You can right? compare Texas to like the New York Mets. And it's the Mets also spent a ton of money to try and fill in holes and try and uh, get over that hump. But they... Yeah, the management. I mean, it's Buck Walter versus Bruce Bochy. I mean, I know who i choose. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And- and, you know, I call it the 2009 blueprint. And But the thing is, you can't get me on Zona because if they feel like more like the Royals, because we know where Arizona is going to lead us to. Arizona, it happened back, yeah. It happened back 20-plus years ago. It's going to happen now that if they did strike it, it's hot, they're going to be prepared for mediocrity the next three years because they'll trade everybody. I feel like and then, I, I, I think I, I said this, but I put it on my Marlins history thing. I like The, the Diamondbacks give me major 2003 Marlins vibes. Yeah, I saw that. It's, it, it really does. They, they, there might, let's say Corbin Carroll, maybe he's their Miguel Cabrera, right? Maybe he's the future Hall of Famer that's 20 years from now is going to you know do the thing, right? And Arizona's not going to be able to keep him like five years from now. At all. And they have like an old veteran like Evan Longoria on that team. We might be uh, like I, I don't think they have like a pudge or anything like that. No. But maybe Longoria's like that guy, the vet, old old grizzled vet. But even then, he's not really. An I don't know player. anybody on the team besides him, Galis or whatever his name is, and uh, Corbin. But if Carol. they do, if they do run the table, it's either a little bit like 2003 Marlins, not exactly because that team had a lot of studs that people just didn't realize were there, mm-hmm. or the 2007 Colorado Rockies. <sighs> Well, who Helton is like fringe Hall of Famer, possibly, where they had like one guy, and just like like it just they just got hot at the right time, and so that that's that would be the only other team I can compare them to, because uh, like Kansas City was just on the backs of their their bullpen, which was elite, and even then they still had great players. I mean, Salvador Perez is an elite catcher and everything like mm-hmm. that. So it's uh, I it, it and they had some really good young uh, position players. But uh, Arizona feels like it's either a little bit of Kansas City, a little bit of the 2003 Marlins, and a little bit of the 2007 Rockies. Yeah. And if you give it to Philly, because you have to think, I, I always value every year. Philly is about to... Bryce Harper. That's a star power. It, it, it's thing. about it's Bryce Harper. Pa- getting, that... you know, getting his, right? It's... Him, well, it's, it's three. It's him, Zach Wheeler, and Trey Turner. And yeah. Trey Turner. Well, Turner's got his ring. Three. 
but no, no. But the thing is, is he's going to be one of the cash out because I think he's on uh, a one year deal. No, no, he's got is he? no. He, he signed I? the big giant contract. He's their shortstop for like ever. No. Uh, maybe that's what I was thinking coming into it. Yeah, where he's, he got his is... ring in Washington. Schwarber's got his ring in Chicago. This is Harper. This is all him. So well, Harper and maybe in Wheeler, right? That's their, yeah. their star pitcher. That, that's your that's your their build around. But you always build into what's the best to get casual people. I I don't know if I can get behind it, man. Now I'm sorry for stealing the point of the lead into Adolis, but I know there was a point that you were going to make to it earlier. I, 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 the no LCS. I don't know. I, just, I think I was talking watch... about the Arizona, but that was it. All right. Yeah. Well, I mean, will you, here's the thing. Will you watch the World Series because the World Series will falls I under? Watch the World. I mean, it depends. Yeah. I mean, I really, I, 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 maybe like the elimination games. Yeah, but, you can't watch one through three. Uh, it depends. Um, and I watch if the game World one series. is like if I if, if you look on the score and and I don't know the sports watching habits of people now are completely changed. No, I I think people very rarely, even people in sports in sports media, very rarely sit down to watch an entire full game from start to finish. And even less so, people who can consume more than one of those games. Because I, I, I don't know. There's very uh, there's some people. Andrew's probably one of them that can probably do like the whole college football. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll watch five six games on on Saturday, right? And mm-hmm. a lot of people do the NFL stuff, and I'll watch. All right, I'll watch the afternoon game. I'll watch the the the, the mid afternoon game, and then I'll watch the the Sunday night football game, and I'll watch Monday night football. And it's like there's some people who do that, and I. I you know, other people are just like, just put red zone and I'll figure it out. Right. Or, or me, I'm watching my stuff through Twitter. I'm like, okay, there's that game. Let me look at the highlights. Okay, cool. That guy hit a home run. That guy scored a touchdown. That guy scored a goal. And, and that's it. The only thing that I'm consuming are my local teams. And that's because I have now a financial incentive to do so. And I think that's the point that I keep with it. That's a very important is that if you, can't keep my interest into wanting to watch the thing that relies on your biggest ratings then we have failed and it's because of it's because the teams are very lacking of interest amongst the the country i'm gonna say and i know i sound ignorant but you know if there's no story what am i going to see it for and why would i want to watch it and that that mindset the hardcore of hardcore baseball fans of course are just like oh you know there's so many good things of course you're you're a hardcore fan Mm -hmm. absolutely like like but even some hardcores are just like "Eh." we could be playing spider-man you know you are a hardcore wrestling fan but you're not watching smackdown every sun every every friday nope you know you you don't do that so then does that make it the least memorable World Series that could happen? Even it could have great moments is because we miss out on it. Because now I feel like the stakes are too high. Now it needs to go to seven games. Now it needs to go to extra innings. Now it has to be the proper pitcher's duels and the star players that are backed up to make it compelling and interesting for us to want to watch. Mm-hmm. And people are like, oh, no, that's not true. I'm like, really think about it. Because what this has the running the risk of is being um, Dodgers Rays World Series, which was very snooze fest, five games out. This has very capacity of being Bra- – who who did the Braves beat again? It wasn't Houston. It was Houston. It was Houston, yes. So yeah, that at least I Houston. think had the – Who? I, I'm sorry, I'm thinking the yeah, Nash. A big, I mean, you have uh, – I just saw Jolly Olive did a video about what he considers the worst World Series mm-hmm. ever, which was the 07 one, which was the Rockies and the Red Sox. Yep. I, I would agree. I, I would also think Detroit losing to the Cardinals. That was another one he, that people right. mentioned as well. The the 2006 World Series was Detroit and, and St. Louis, right? And, and that's usually because it was either a sweep or five games, but there was legitimate studs, like guys who were perennial yeah, MVP or Cy Young. Yeah, there's a bunch of Hall of Famers on both sides of that, but the, the Tigers just kind of just died. That, when they yeah. got to the World Series, that was it. Jim Lou and teams. But then, let, let, man, we're doing some good analysis here. i got to stand up and put the control down. because I'm Hour talking and 35 minutes just to let you know. That's fine. So it's we can get show, to the everybody. NBA stuff because uh, uh, NBA on TNT is on right now. And Chuck <laughs> and, and all those guys are talking right now. I feel like yeah. you're going to well, do the high yeah. mind thing. Well, well this, <laughs> is, this is a good point to kind of make up. When it comes to Zona, you're running your, your – you're running your your cachet on and your concept of like why I should be invested. It's the young prospects of the future. Eh, Washington kind of did that, and look where it took me. Oh, Texas, it's a Hall of Fame manager with Hall of Fame stud pitching. 
what Scherzer who can't complete two innings DeGrom who's not there Seager's fine as a player okay Adalis who I've already been like this is really my first time kind of looking at him because he's been overshadowed but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be I'm, I'm hard I'm sorry to say it no offense Andrew I'm not gonna be fake and start following a guy just because he put on one great series and be like that's the dude right I'd rather just go with Harper who we've always known has been great but is that not Texas's team Right, that that's the whole concept. We'll rely on this, and then we're gonna go into you know we can't go to Houston because it got limited, and then we go into Washington or Philly, and we're like, all right, it's Harper, it's doing the Cody Rhodes. We're gonna finish the story, mm-hmm. but if they don't finish the story, if I don't get that because ha- I don't hate Bryce Harper, so if I don't get that happy right. ending of him getting it, then I'm like, then what's my time wasted on? And that that that's tough. Yeah, it's that's yeah, tough. it's legitimate criticism. The same people, the same people. We're talking about the Heat versus Nuggets series as boring, or the Panthers and the Golden Knights as a boring series. Like it's yes, it's there is a marketability Wait, thing. Heat Denver was fantastic because y'all hate us so much. Right, you do not have any of that heat in this. If if it was yeah. Houston going, absolutely. Yeah, and and yeah, the, the, that was more of a hate thing that kind of fueled people. People wanted to see the Heat and the Panthers lose. More than anything else, I think. Yep. Yeah. So that was that was that. You point. you guys ran on the narrative of we want Florida. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and I mean, the discourse coming into this season, as far as the Panthers is concerned, is like people hate hate us. And they absolutely yeah, wrestling. We love a good heel. Yeah. They they hate us. They hate Matthew Kachuk and everything like that. I'm just like, oh, this is this is a nice feeling to have right now. We're relevant. And people hate us, and they don't want us to even make the playoffs. I'm like, okay, good, good. This is great. You know, Toronto fans are still salty as ever that uh, that they lost last season, and I can laugh at them when the Blue Jays lose, and the Raptors are eventually going to lose, and the and the Leafs are eventually going to lose. So I, I I can do all of that now. It's and it's great. Okay, we're at an hour and thirty eight minutes, Charles. It is NBA opening night, and you yeah. said you had some thoughts. I I'm going into the season. Pretty, eh, <laughs> to be honest. Um, well, that's know, a typical Eric Spolstra season. Yeah, yeah. This is what two thousand and uh, what, what comparison of a, of, yeah two thousand every season. 2000, He's got figured 2019, out 2019, 2020, 2021, right? Just like okay, let's see what we've got by the end of this, and uh, you know. But I'll, I'll try. I, I will try. I will try to pay more attention to the Miami Heat. Because I feel like I failed to, <laughs> like most of us did. Well, there is no heat historian. Well, there is, but he. Oh, I don't no run that. I don't run that account. So, so there you go. Uh, but um, I, I don't like the way he runs his account, to be honest. So it's not like the way I do it. It's too too much personal stuff about things that have nothing to do with the actual. Miami Heat. So yeah, it gets weird like that with some of the Twitter, uh, the Twitter followings where you like them, and all of a sudden they're talking about like how they're they can't yeah. see their kid, and you're like, um, dude, it's, I'm just yeah, exactly. For the it's like you know, yeah. Hamas. I'm like, this is this is a basketball page. <laughs> you, know? you have a personal account. Just yeah. go say it there. Yeah, exactly. That's why I have multiple accounts, Charles. Because if like I like the NHL thing, this the whole thing with the stick tape policy. I do Panthers historian. I'm pretty neutral for the most part, but. With that stuff, I'm just I'll put it on my personal stuff, and if people hate it, they can hate it there, you know. So that's that's what I do with that. Anyways, it's one on one between the Phillies and the Diamondbacks right now. Um, NBA season starting. I don't. I have no storylines going into the season. What's I, interesting, Charles, to you? Because I, I have I, no idea. The the Nuggets defending their championship. Eh. I never thought I was going to get this twice as long as I was doing the show. Do you remember Revenge Paymaker Tour when we found out about the cheating with the, the from the, the Astros? Astros? And oh, then yes, I said yes, the yes, Yankees, yes. everything was a revenge tour, yeah. the Painmaker Tour. Yeah. And this is the Painmaker Tour Volume 2 redo on the heat and the dirt. The dirt. I remember I was the bad guy during MLB seasons for it. Mm-hmm. And the interest is like, let me see what a real constructed team looks like. Because for some reason, everybody wants to come to Miami. But, you know, they ain't holding out there. They ain't forcing hands. They ain't doing it. They ain't pulling no James Hardens to kind of get there because you set me the thing about the Bradley Beal, and I'm going to say it right now there. Nobody wanted Bradley Beal here. That contract is such a huge albatross in a in a 
NBA that the ownership is looking to actually lower the salary floor. I guarantee you, or not the salary floor, but lower the ceiling of what they want coming into it. Right. Where we had to endure Dame and the, the two month, you know, hostage situation. It was false imprisonment on the false hopes and dreams that I was going to get Dame in Miami. Mm-hmm. So now, now you're going to see what it what the pain maker tour is going to look like of Kyle Lowry probably starting as my point guard pain beyond pain. That's the first pain, but to, you have to give a little, get a little right. So it's going to be that it's going to be Jimmy Butler with, you know, his new mentality, his new mindset, a bam, maybe Duncan Robinson's back in the fold. Cause we didn't trade him. So maybe he can earn his mints. And he did find the finals where you do Tyler hero, revenge of the hero, right? Return of the hero. Let's mm-hmm. call it like that. That's the dub. That's the, let's see what Jamie Yaquez gets us. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, junior, the triple J, not Jeff Jarrett, junior, Jamie Jaquez, junior. Let's yeah. see what some of these other guys kind of build in. Because the one thing I will tell you, there's no Gabe Vincent. There is, which kind of hurt a little bit. There's no other home guy that I don't remember right now who went to Cleveland because I didn't care for him. Let him be. His name will come back to me. And once you guys see him live shooting like three for 14, mm-hmm. you're going to understand that pain. You're like, all right, go from there. Jimmy might miss him. I ain't going to miss him. But, you know, I'm here to make the hard decision. We got Caleb Martin. For the first time in maybe Richardson's three back. years, Richardson's back. That's interesting to me. First time because you need a good second unit for the first time in three years. I think Spo knows what he wants to do with his roster because he actually has more of a consistent pieces. What's really gonna do is just expand some minutes. There is no depot that we're waiting to hope hit a start stop situation like he has yeah. for the last several years. There is no waiting until someone blossoms like it did happen with Caleb Martin, Gabe Vincent. Um, there, there is none of that coming to. There's no relying on dudes that you've never heard about building into it. You're this time is the time we have it. And there's some capacity to get some in-season trades because the thing is, the longer we keep Duncan Robinson each year, the more appealable his contract might be in expiring contract season. I think there's just two years left. Mm-hmm. But I, for all his defensive woes and for his ability to just kind of like stop, we're going to run that gambit because now Dame going to a team that – I have no hard feelings on, and I still have no hard feelings on them. Giannis signed that big ass extension, mm-hmm. uh, 10, three years, 186 million. That's good. Let them be the favorites. And for some reason, the Celtics think that they're favorites with all the flurry of moves that they did. Where I'm like, mm. I mean, you got poor Zingas, who I like the build up, but everything else I'm in between. And it's the year of Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum just not doing anything. The Knicks are still the Knicks. You know, Philly might not even have Harden. Mm. Yeah, I want to follow the narrative of Paymaker Tour and to see if we truly land where I think we're going to go on seeding, where I think as high we can get to three. Okay. That's the that's the Charles Ramos prediction. As high as three, okay. four, maybe as low as five. This is not a six, seven, eight team. We're not going to be on the fringe because there was so much hatred because it's the narrative storyline of revenge, hmm. Francisco. I don't care about all the other stuff. The Lakers are the Lakers. The Golden State Warriors are Golden State Warriors. The Suns, I want to see burn badly, no pun intended, just because it's how much dudes can you go on who all need the ball in their hand to score, who are defensive liabilities. Like, remember, yeah. they trade for Bradley Beal. I mean, yeah, this is their – this is uh, – I mean, the and Suns were part of coach. that – Part of that uh, that swap between Portland and Milwaukee and everything like that, retooling their team. You know, James Jones doing what he can to try and get something out of that. Chris Paul's gone, right? So, yeah, Phoenix and, and, is a – that will be an interesting scenario. Yeah, and so, the, I mean, I, I have my opinions on it, as I told you. Frank Vogel's now the coach. Well, I'm like, Ugh. You know, I mean, I understand everything that was building with Monty being gone. But, like, yeah. the, those storylines don't invest you because the only real storyline is, like, a bunch of young dudes keep getting paid out of fear. You know, the, these big contracts that come into it. But the focus is revenge, the build up that go from there. Because now what it's going to happen is if you've seen how a lot of the playoffs kind of get you there and what your current, you know, NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets did that a lot of other teams haven't done that we were trying to do is that consistency with the team, mm-hmm. team chemistry and good coaching. That's going to prevail. And, and I am on the pain tour because I, I, I will probably watch the Portland game. I don't think they're coming to Miami this year, but if they did, I buy the tickets. You know, mm-hmm. going from it without doubt, question. I said it'd be a no. Team. They, they no, they always come. All the teams come to every whatever year. every year. They all go at least once. But I, I'm ready for that pain because I because the problem is is that I have to find a storyline to get behind because we know Portland's going to suck this season. Mm-hmm. They're going to suck forever. So I need my revenge, mm-hmm. my yeah. painstaking tour, some the revenge sort of, of the hero. yeah. 
is the kind of show you guys that even without Dame, we can still do it. And I'm terrified of Milwaukee. That is the best built team. Why do we even have the salary cap between what Milwaukee has and then what Phoenix is doing? And even to a luxury, man, that's what you do. Yeah. And my, I I think, you know, Mickey and Pat and everybody else can kind of get pissed off and buy next year if they want to. I think that we do. I think we do next year. I think you want to see where it all kind of builds in and but that you want to see what this is to see if it's really worth it because it's about well coached teams but i think next year it's not about going for the whale i think pat used that a lot but this time it's going to be like an f you i'm gonna start taking steroids now that is (laughs) one storyline i'm going to see because basketball season doesn't start today it does but it really starts in january yeah and we've talked about this numerous times but that that is the energy reason why we have this new in-season tournament thing because they're yep. trying to make the first half of the season interesting for. But understand, you know, I'm gonna yeah. dunk on it. I'm gonna dunk on it. I'm gonna dunk on it. If I see, if I see tomorrow that the Miami Heat are the one seed and it's only two games, three games, four games in the season, I'm not gonna shut up about it. That's the energy. That is the vibe that you guys are gonna get. Because mm-hmm. we have no choice but to be. I never thought I would get revenge tour paymaker 2020 mm. 19 i think is what we dubbed it as now you're yeah, getting yeah. revenge tour paymaker 2023 going to 2020 imagine parakeet cortez if that happens right oh yeah well <laughs> i think he's channeling this. he he's he follow him on the 20 he's freaking funny but that that's the that's uh, that's the high-end energy of it just call in the boston radio as well yeah well all right we're at hour 47 charles i think we should hop on to the petty train Let's do it. Talk about the NFL real quick. I will tell you this. I did not pay much attention at all. At all. This has been such a disinteresting NFL. I haven't watched any games, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, and once again, we can skim through it and just kind of give our our thoughts on like the scores and stuff. I did pay attention to the Dolphins. Of course I did because I need the narrative that I am trying to put out there. And the Philadelphia Eagles kind of did it for me already. And much like I, I... uh, I thought that they would. Boy, man, and I feel I, like Andrew became a super Miami fan if you were following his Twitter because all he was is complaining about the refs in that game. But continue. With the Canes? Or the no, no, no. Oh, Dolphins. Uh, Dolphins. Okay. Uh, how there was no penalties call on Philly. I'm like, oh, you're wearing aqua and teal now, bud? Oh, no. Anyways, uh, the <laughs> Dolphins <laughs> cannot – Yeah, the Dolphins cannot be any real teams. And I, I've i said this already. I, I Look, they they finally reached the level where they – they can beat the teams that they're supposed to beat. They can beat the teams that are mid, even though they think they're better than they are, but they're actually mid. But they cannot go up against the top dogs of the NFL and teams that they they that they that will be contending with come playoff time because I still think they're going to make the playoffs. They already got five victories. That, that's very hard to squander. The Eagles come in, or they go to Philadelphia, and then the Eagles... Uh, the, the game is all right, somewhat close starting out, but then the Eagles space it out. And I'm I'm not blaming the refs or anything whatsoever. Get good. Get good. Tua, one touchdown, one interception. Yeah. You know, Raheem Mostert was just 45 yards. The, the run game wasn't working for the Dolphins this time. Weren't you, weren't you guys down, lost like 31-17 too? Yeah, it was a 31-17 game. The run game was not working the uh, Philadelphia – uh, just took it to him, and your your boy AJ Brown got his 137 <sighs> yards and his touchdown as well, right? And that's a very well constructed team in Philadelphia. They had one loss. It's okay, fine. They lost one game. That's that's cool. But they now still... got better with Kevin Byard. It, that's true. That is true as well. But Miami still is a team that is everything's hanging by a thread. What happens when? You, what happens when the run game isn't working? What happens when Tua uh, can't throw it? They, they can't out, uh, out, out gun you as far as the passing game. The Dolphins have really nothing, to be honest. They no real diversity from there. I, I, I think yes, it's very flashy, it's very cool, and everything like that. But I think come playoff time, especially come these types of games, the Dolphins are lacking. And they can't win these types of games. And they've already shown it by losing to the Bills in that type of game, by losing to Philadelphia in this type of game as well. 
in this type of playoff atmosphere game where defense suddenly becomes more tantamount and much much more important and the teams that that uh, can scheme that better can find a way to beat the Dolphins at what they do. So uh, that's that's my assessment on the Dolphins game. I did watch Twitter highlights and everything like that. And I did see the mountains of complaints that people did. And I haven't listened to any of the local sports stuff or the Dan Lebertard show, local hour, anything like that about it. Uh, because I am just kind of – I'm kind of basking in – this right now unless in this narrative and i'll, I'll just say to this unless it's a right, holding like it. It, unless it's a holding in the goal line situation mm-hmm. where it would cost you a touchdown the mere prospect that added penalties could have gotten you a touchdown is erroneous there's three things that can happen near the goal line kids field goal touchdown turnover or downs so four you know turnover and downs you're not guaranteed anything and it goes back to what i kind of hate about the sport is that we sometimes cater on the fantasy level of the mere possibility that you could get a touchdown mm. and it, it doesn't work, especially <laughs> with the way that offense was being ran. That That's well, that's a new thing in the NHL. We're, we're, the, the new hot thing is expected goals, Charles. What mm. goals were you expected to get? Uh, I, I personally like it because it, it does say something about your offense, but uh, at the same time, when you don't execute, it is very telling. When you see expected goals very high and actual goals very low. So there, there's some things with that. Anyways, so that was the Dolphins game. That's the other thing. So let's – that was the one I wanted to start with. So we'll run down the list. Charles, I think your Titans were off, right? They were off. But we did some moves. We traded Kevin Byard. Everybody has texted me saying that we were just blowing up. Byard is 30. He has two years left on his contract. He didn't want to play because he's been wanting – we've been wanting to restructure. He wouldn't do it. We got Terrell Edmonds. He's on a one-year deal, but he was a former first-rounder, so maybe there's potential. We got a five and a six. It's fine. I think you guys just don't understand how it goes with money and when you're building to the future. And we're just trying to open up a lot of cap. Next year is either we're going to sign somebody big or just spur around to put the money equally. It, it's figure out how to play the game, but we were off. All I think right. we play the Falcons next. So we have the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New Orleans Saints. Jacksonville won 31 and 24. Anything? Eh. Um, Derek Carr is not a good quarterback, and we defend him a lot. Yeah, that that's all I can I say to that. Uh, you're white bread quarterbacks, <laughs> so there's there's. One. But he's not. He, remember, it's young white bread quarterbacks. Okay, young white bread. Okay, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's, For the two guys I was pointing, don't worry, my humble pie is coming to dish right. out. I'm gonna serve it. How about our favorite low brain quarterback, Charles? Dude, he's so bad. Three mm-hmm. fumbles. One of them would have been a guarantee. He didn't have an interception. He didn't have an interception, but three fumbles. What quarterback do you know that has three fumbles losing, especially since he lost that one going to the goal line? They still won because, yeah. you know, it was just, it came down to an overtime and a kick that didn't happen. But it, man, Desmond Ritter, and I've been dogging on Desmond Ritter like this entire season. He's, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but. You know, for there's Andrew, who's a big proponent of the American has like Andrew still uh, spirits possess me. He still thinks that Mackenzie Milton did not get hurt. He would have been a second round quarterback drafted and like been a star, probably won like three MVPs at this point. Hmm. You watch people play against other teams outside their conference when they already play in bad conferences. And then you see they're not up to stuff. That's Desmond Ritter. And I understand he won the game, but did he really win it or was it his team that won it? That's all I'll say about him. <laughs> all righty. And I play him this week. So it's like. Let's see what happens. He'll probably tear us up. <laughs> yes. Next is the uh, the Chicago Bears beat the Vegas Raiders. How does Josh McDaniels have a job? He was such a bad hire. But you know what? Good. Mark Davis deserves yeah. that kind of pain. When you've built a better roster than WNBA, congratulations to Las Vegas. Was it Sparks? Aces. Uh, Aces. Thank you. I don't, I don't follow the WNBA. I always feel like they have two seasons a year, but it's only one. Apparently, yeah. and like, it's a five game series for their finals. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, it just goes by very quickly, but congrats to them. But Mark Davis, the Davises have always been terrible. They, they are that like, I have no pity for them kind of vibe. And I, I would not have touched Josh McDaniels with a heartbeat. And mm. he started Brian Hoyer instead of Aiden O'Connell as, you know, Jimmy Guapo was injured. And I'm just like, how do you function? What is mm. your you, the uh, the dick riding eleven of your love of former Patriots, man. You know, at least Jimmy G, you can kind of sell me on him a little bit as saying, hey, he's 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 Arnold Potato Bread. You know, kind of expensive but better than what you got at great value. But Brian Hoyer, I really just take a chance to the other kid. Yeah, 
and Josh Jacobs is not doing anything. And I don't know if it's because Josh Jacobs is now bad or just that team is bad under what McDaniels is calling. I'd say the latter. Yeah. I think a lot of guys that are, probably would show out a little bit better with a different coach or in a different scenario, different team. All right, Cleveland beat Indianapolis 39-38. Man, I got to tell you, in all seriousness. You like the Browns? I don't like the Browns because I hate okay. um, Deshaun, and I think Kevin Stefanski is kind of an idiot. Uh-huh. I respect the hell out of Miles Garrett. That yes. man is good. Yeah, you. I think out of everything, I think people are, are disappointed that, oh, man, why does he have to be on that team? <laughs> yeah. Like, I would give my left nut to Gavin him on my team. Not like uh-huh. the Titans' defensive line is bad, it's excellent. But um, we love you, Nico Autry, and everybody else, and um, Jeffrey Simmons and all that. But, man, I got to tell you, I saw that field goal block, and I was, like, in love. He is just – a five-tool player is the word we hear a lot, right? Uh-huh. And I'm feeling it. It's just so good. Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, something else. Let's keep going here. So – that was Cleveland and uh, New York Giants beat the Commanders 14-7. I really want Tyra Taylor to keep that job. Hmm. Yeah. It's like Daniel Jones. I have been on the anti-Daniel Jones train for a very long time. I did not see it. And now we have that. And I was like, bruh, how we how are we going to keep to it hmm. in that sense? Yeah. Well, that's going against your uh, white bread. Uh, yeah. Young white bread quarterback. So. But, you know, I've only really defended two. But Daniel Jones, remember, it was from the same draft class as well. He was not. Mm -hmm. Um, Saquon still kind of hurt. Tyrod Tyrod was always kind of like the safe bet, but sometimes the safe bet's okay. You marry the guy with the mortgage and the house almost paid off, right? You don't marry the guy who has like three baby baby mamas and stuff like that and drive his mom's car, such as Wild wild Burgers. Mm -hmm. The Ravens beat the Lions. Man, now John Harbaugh hurt us. John Har- Harbaugh heard us say a lot of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, oh, you're just ruining Lamar. You're ruining Lamar. You're ruining Lamar. Now he's like, hey, we're just going to let Lamar shine. It gets a team that we all propelled because we like Dan Campbell. And then they just got sent home early. Don't and they be fell Sean down Payton, there. John. Don't be yeah, Sean don't, Payton. Well, you know, right? But, man, it was some stuff. The, oh, well, here's a white bread quarterback winning the Patriots, <laughs> Bills. Man, remember how we started like the season a little bit last year and then continuing this season as well, where I'm just like, is Josh Allen going to become my Aaron Rodgers where you guys just tell me he's good and then on paper maybe it fits, but when you see it all cultivate together, it just doesn't make sense because there's always someone going to make an excuse for somebody such as Ken Dorsey is his quarterback's coach or offensive coordinator yeah. and – you know, all this, it, it's kind of mounting. Is it they don't have a running game? Well, they, they have James Cook, who's a second rounder. They had Damian Harris, who got hurt. They got Stefan Diggs. They drafted, you know, the tight end, you know, in the first round. You know, their defensive guys are still noticeable. I'm like, what, what do you want? And you couldn't move on a Bill Belichick team. And the entire team itself is fraudulent. We've been saying it for what, two years that they're fraudulent, three years. Um, and it just rubbed the wrong way because you were kind of complaining about the overtime stuff. And now you lost to the safe Mac Jones, the white bread, right? Who was just kind of slicing, dicing on short routes. But even you took the lead. And look, when I said, give him some time, what does he have? He's got Bill O'Brien, Bill Belichick for coaches and coordinators. He's got Kendrick Bourne. He doesn't have much to work with, guys. He's got Mike Isecki and Hunter Henry. And then what does he do? He says, hey, buddy, I ain't no great value. I ain't no Sarah Lee. I'm fucking 12. I'm Wonder Bread, baby. I'm always in hot commodity. I'm going to score in the last seven games and then really put the Buffalo on the rails because Buffalo hasn't looked good, but you shouldn't lose to a team like this, right? Because they still couldn't run with Ramondre Stevenson. They still couldn't run with Ezekiel Elliott, but guess what? They did it, and they beat you, and it hurts. Why? Because – you were vying for the AFC East. And I do think if you, whoever got that title, that division was really, 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 really going to help out in comparison to, you know, playing on anybody outside the conference. Cause you lose to the Patriots, the Patriots lost to the dolphins. So your guys are ahead on that tiebreaker, man. See yeah. what happens. Okay. So that's bills. Patriots. Let's keep going. We've got, 
the Seahawks beat Arizona. Eh. 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 Okay. Eh. We'll move eh. on. G- g- listen, listen. Hold on. Tank. Well, not just that, but remember when I said San Fran, watch out a little bit? Mm. Yo, San Fran's kind of been stinking. Seattle's right there. Uh, Pittsburgh beat the Rams. What, what a bullshit call. That's 13. But, yeah, that was not a first down. And whether or not that would have hmm. pushed the that Rams Mike to win. Mike Tomlin magic. That Mike Tomlin magic. Because he's the only coach that you like who doesn't frustrate you. You can't hate Mike Tomlin. It's impossible to hate Mike Tomlin. Unless you're a Steelers fan because he won't fire Matt Canada. But, you know, when you're winning games, you're winning games. Four and two. Let's see. The uh, the Chiefs beat the Chargers. It's time. It's 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 time. It's time to admit something, to say something. Something has to be done. Maybe Justin Herbert isn't as good as we think he is. Mm. Maybe he's just built on the success of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and whoever they have with Austin Eckler. Well, well, Maybe yeah. Brandon Saley should have been fired immediately. Maybe Justin Herbert is just your, you know, your Ryan Tannehill extension, I th- right? I think, uh, yeah, we'll see. I think it, it, it's all going to depend on what happens with the new coach because Stalin's not staying. He's, because if I if I gave that ish to Josh Allen when I said on paper all looks good and stuff, but it's not worth it, I I think I got I think the only difference between him and Allen is the fact that Allen's been to the playoffs a lot, mm-hmm. whereas you know, Homie went once last year and just didn't yield good rewards because Homeboy was you know dry. With Brandon Saley's play calling. All right. Denver beat Green Bay. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. That's not fair. Like neither team looked good. That was and tankful. So it, it, it really well, the problem is is one's maybe tanking the idea of you can get better draft mm-hmm. picks because you're still getting stuff. But the other one's really just kind of like trying to figure out they should sell or not at two and five. Or and like yeah. you should contemplate selling. You've already sold as it is. And finally, the Niners lose to Minnesota. Kirk Cousins defense time. All right. Kirk Cousins falls on the line of the slightly above average Ryan Tannehill, where if he is not throwing 30 picks a season, we're good, right? We're, we're building into something fantastico for us that works effectively well, very well to build from. You guys gave him a lot of stuff because he can't come into prime time, which is not a real stat, mind you, in my opinion. Even though people say I'm like prime time games have no balance. Playoff games hold maybe more balance, but still, it's not something that I would say that focus on there. But he came up, he dissected, he he missed some touchdowns, but he was able to get Jordan Addison to do some beautiful things with it and make it work. And then you get Brock Purdy. Mm. Oh, Brock, when people realize all you do is throw screens and then down the lines and everything and your boys are injured. And I don't know if he's good or not. I know he has like 11 touchdowns to three picks, which is fine. I understand he's five and two and that's fine. But I also understand that with that Kyle Shanahan game plan is it cannot go for error. I think sometimes the best quarterbacks, the Patrick Mahomes, the not Tom Brady's because he's always on script, but the Peyton Manning's who always change audibles or even to a degree, I'll I'll give a shout out to the late great time, Steve McNair. When it all crumbles and you have to kind of play some improvisation, what are you going to do? And that ain't Brock Purdy, man. That ain't his game at all, bro. It's so bad. Yeah. There's a lot of questions as to whether he's made for this or if he's just... uh... He's a seventh rounder for a reason. Yeah. Like, is he really the diamond in the rough, or is it just, you know? Okay. Uh huh. Oh, just the thought into is like, we love the diamond in the rough so much because we always attribute it to the Tom Brady stuff. Right. But, you know, the idea is that Brady is supposed to be a shock of the system, lightning strikes once kind of thing. It's really more or less the hubris of Shanahan who looked at Trey Lance says, I don't want you, even though I don't think Trey got a fair shot because he got hurt in his starting season when he was going to be fully a starter. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that if you put them hand and foot against each other with a fair competitive advantage, you would have had something that was different, right? Because the same argument could be made about Jimmy. You got maybe above average guys putting in your rotating out, but at some point, if the division's too hot and the division might be too hot right now, because it's not four games ahead. It's, what, a game and a half behind on one. And then I still think the Rams will figure their stuff out. 
So what are you what are you gonna do, man? Okay. Well, that's it for the petty train, Charles. We're at two hours and five minutes. What do we have in the cage? Welcome, everybody. Your weekly True Plex the Cage with Charles. Full disclaimer wrestling is not fake. It's scripted. It's a stage fight. It's a song and dance. It's about men and women being the holy hell of each other, chasing championships, establishing legacies, bringing out there for my enjoyment, and just having a good old time. So, we're going to keep it kind of short because, once again, wrestling is not interesting to me this week, even though I was playing WWE 2K22. I'll I got bigger news to drop, but let me go through the rundowns. Halloween Havoc is happening right now on NXT. It's a two-week show. Watch it. Support it. Go from there. It's fine. AEW tomorrow. Dynamite. Watch it. Support it. They're just fine. They're building up a world title eliminator match. They challenge MGF, who's challenging all these people. Christian Cage is still fantastic. Swerve Hangman still continuing. This is good. Ikara Rashida is going to do some new women's title. Orange Cassidy has the international belt. There's that. Um, Small shout out to Impact. It's no longer Impact, Francisco. They announced over the weekend that they're going back to TNA, total nonstop action. Don't know why. I was never into the TNA mesh as much or Impact, but good for them. It's still going to be the same wrestlers. I don't know what they're going to change design wise, match wise, production wise, anything like that. But as I have an allergy attack live on show, um, but good for them. If they want to go back to those roots and do something. Remember, that's how they originally were founded. I'm going to sneeze again, so maybe you mute it this time. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, it just came out of nowhere. I think it's because I start smelling the BS of uh, you know baseball and Miami Heat and Joe Cronin that it got me, bud. So that was originally what they started as total nonstop action when funded by Jeff Jarrett. They went to Impact for a bit and or for a long time, and now they're going back to TNA. So good for them, right? So we have that New Japan. It's New Japan. Stuff's happening there um wwe i am so over the judgment day i'm bored by them i'm liking drew mcintyre's um heel turn that slowly coming th- coming suit the one thing i will announce about wwe as now my nose is clogged for some reason probably a bug bit me is now we have general managers again before adam pierce was co-designed as the general manager or making the shots on raw and smackdown on smackdown triple h came out and announced that there's gonna be adam pierce on raw as general manager and on SmackDown is going to be Nick Aldis on SmackDown as their general manager. So they're playing up to survivor series, which is brand supremacy now. So I think you're going to have raw versus SmackDown. I don't think you're going to NXT in this time. They're not said to be doing war games, which is fine because you know, it, there's not a proper storyline to it. Last year's was perfect this year. If you're just giving me Cody and the bunch with the war games, I'm not for it now. Crown Jewel is next week, so expect the rundown when I do Crown Jewel. In my, mm-hmm. in our, actually, we might have to reset it because your boy, we can't reveal the costume just in case the coworkers hear what I'm doing because they don't know yet oh. for Halloween. But we, you know, how, the show would be at the same time as Halloween, so you know I'd be handing out the candies to the kids and to the families that are coming around to the neighborhood. So we might have to lynch it onto a different day and pin it onto a different day, which is always a possibility. We'll speak on that. But Crown Jewels next week, Full Gears a couple weeks from now for AEW. That's my update. That's all I'm going to give you. LA Knight, Roman Reigns, as you see. I got bigger news. I got better news. I got mm-hmm. something that is, you know, there's a quote from Collateral. Great movie. You guys should watch it. Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise in a jazz scene circa 2004, directed by Michael Mann, one of my favorite movies, like a top 30, top 50, where the scene is there. And I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, even though it's been 20 years, basically. Me. Where the- <laughs> Yeah, because you don't watch movies, but there's a scene where the jazz musician goes, you know, I was conceived and born on XYZ, but with the minute I met a uh, Miles Davis, you know, one of the jazz people, I was, you know, that's when I was truly born. That's going to be me. Mm-hmm. You ready for it? January 27th mm-hmm. in Tropicana in St. Petersburg, because your boy is going to the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Your boy is going to the Royal Rumble. Part of the big four pay-per-view. This is the first Longer. one, right, that you've ever, you'll ever experience? The first the the first pay-per-view i've been to a live smackdown i've been to a house show mm-hmm. i've been to house shows for nxt this is going to be me going to the big four pay-per-view and what do we love about the royal rumble the royal rumble is you know two basically battle royals of 30 people and whoever wins ends up going to wrestlemania to equate it to you in sports terms this is the eastern conference finals this is the alcs you know, this is the AFC Championship, NFC Championship. This is the Eastern Conference Finals in hockey. For some, WrestleMania is the Super Bowl. I would venture, though, that Royal Rumble can be more exciting because 
of the fact that you don't have the full predictability of the winner. At WrestleMania, you usually think you know who's going to win because of the payoff and culmination of a lot of stories, except for Cor- Cody it, uh, losing to Roman. <laughs> just uh, from my cursory knowledge, uh, just surface level knowledge based on several games of playing WWE No Mercy on the Nintendo 64 back in like 99. The Royal Rumble, isn't that when, like, there's just a bunch of dudes and they yep. all come in one after the other? Yep. It's just a grand battle royal, right? Okay. 30 people starts with a one and two and it builds up. Before Fortnite, before it was cool. Yeah. Usually it, it goes about an hour. So you have the men's, you have the women's, but it helps propel a lot um, of storylines building into it. And I'm excited. Remember, I was going to go to WrestleMania three years ago with COVID. Mm-hmm. Happened. The pandemic Tampa, and it robbed yeah. me of a lot of things. So I was going to do Mania and I was going to do the NXT TakeOver pay-per-view. And I'm going with my paralegal and we had discussed it. And he's like, uh, no, please. I'm like, absolutely not. You know, he, he's like, well, this is the budget. I'm like, we will find a way. And damn <laughs> we're going to be, and it's the trop. And you know, I hate the trop. And um, I'm afraid that when I sit down, I'm going to have like a new kind of like, you know, a catwalk is going to be in your way. Yeah. Wait, wait well, no, that, where are your seats? Hold on. Where are your seats? So I thought I screenshotted it. And if I did, I was going to have, I, I just don't remember exactly. It what, is like, in where section H. Like, I'm, is I'm it, bring it all right? Like, uh, in terms of the baseball field, where would you be sitting at? Well, let me let me bring up my tickets and then I'll, I'll go from there because I had to order it through the ballpark app because the race, yeah, the race are the ones that are selling it. It was, it was kind of it weird is, when I is saw so it. terrible, man. Because not only do I now get stuff from the Miami Marlins, which is fine because when the Yankees come out, I'd rather go to Miami, but now I get stuff from the Miami Marlins, I get stuff from the Yankees ticket sites for the attires, and now I get stuff from you know, the uh. Race. The Rays, and it's, I, I hate the trop. I hate the trop. I, I, I really just despise it mm. so much. I'm afraid I'm going to sit on a needle, <laughs> and that's just going to be the end of the story. So where I'm sitting, I'm, I'm bringing up the photo, so you're going to have to bear with me just for a minor second, please, is – where is it? Of course, you know, I screenshot it too. And I, I was just – I don't. How was the reactions to you when I was in the chat blowing up my reactions? Because I was sending the Drake meme when he's just screaming. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is it is my conception because I think that's what everybody wants to do. I would not have done it if Vince was still around. So, in the event of the ballpark, it's kind of tough. But so, imagine if it's on the field. You think the... of it home plate. Okay. All right. Because so I'm on the floor level. Okay, that's right. I'm floor H, right. They're gonna put the ring, so I'm right by the ring. Okay, and I'm seeing it at a, a television angle, not are, with. You're uh, on the floor. You are on the floor. You're not in the yeah. lower bowl. You're not in the upper deck. I'm gonna send it to the chat so you can kind of get an understanding of it. And it's just floor H that I'm at. So it's floor H, and okay. I, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're basically you're at home plate, basically. Yeah. I, I'm at home plate, and it's um. Our tickets are floor H, row 21, seat 17. So because I told Derek, I'm like, I want to sit where I can see the entrances where people are running into the Royal Rumble because, you know, so there's some returns. There's yeah, legends. coming in from basically like the Rays dugout. Yeah. So that that's how we're building it. So I'm like super excited. I have to figure out what I'm going to wear. I'm thinking it's going to be a Roman Reigns shirt just so I can give everybody give me the middle finger because I expect him to still be winning the title. And, you know, I anticipate it's going to be a very good pay-per-view on certain match bills. I have predictions that it's either going to be Roman versus Randy or Roman versus AJ. I don't care. I'll take either one. But it, it, it's good because of what it could mean. And I think the disappointment might be less than if I went to a WrestleMania. Like, I can't imagine for people who paid to see Cody versus Roman last year with the expectation that Roman was going to lose only to have him win. You know what I mean? Mm. And I mean, I was happy with it, but you know, Roman, I've liked the bloodline and stuff like that, or even though some time, but I'm excited, man. And it's on a Saturday. So I'm, well, I'm driving back home. You know, me, Derek and I talked about it because it's in Tampa. I'm like three and a half hours away. I can do it. If the pay-per-view ends by 11, 1130. I just get the biggest energy drink known to mankind. Yeah. And it's a straight shot because you know, Tampa, I don't need to go back there. You know, I was there in April for a conference. It was fine, you know, but um, I'm going to eat good. I'm going to, you know, wear my appropriate attire. He's like, oh, you should, uh, you should bring your title belt. I'm like, absolutely not. That's <laughs> it's too heavy to carry and stuff like that. Plus, I'll forget about it. Knowing me, I'll be so tired. I want to go. I'm like, I'm not that big of the fandom, but you know, you want to do something good with it. So, I'm excited, man. And I didn't realize because as an attorney and as a professional, you get lost in time. Every day is the same. It's the it's the basis of mediocrity that happens. And then I realized it's only two and a half months away. So this is like my my Christmas gift to myself. It, the mm-hmm. tickets. 
to tickets for some would be expensive for others might not be i'll tell you right now what i paid for it and i'm a fine with it i paid 750 because yeah. i was stupid and i i was on the platinum pre-sale i'm like i'm, I'm like three grand i don't i don't want to pay three grand but i guess the pre platinum pre-sale is like an inclusivity kind of thing where there's other and stuff how long, other amenities. how long how long does it last how long is the royal like how Generally long is the hours. hours how long the the pay per view might be four hours. Four okay, so that's that's for seven hundred and fifty bucks for four hours for one of the big four events, right? That's like yeah. going to a like a major for like a tennis tournament or whatever, right? It's going to the ALCS. It's going to right. and where like, the image. I went to where, the Stanley Cup final. I dropped thirteen hundred bucks for two tickets for game. Yeah, three. and that's relatively you know give or take about the same amount. I, I would be closer to seeing it. And with wrestling, you want to trust me. I've been to some live events. You want to get the right angle. I don't want to be somewhere where I'm not getting the full view of the match i've been there when i'm raised up a little and being up a little bit it's cool but the problem is is that if i got focus on the titan tron mm -hmm. or the screen to help me out that's not doing me any good not for the royal rumble right. because if i want to do that i'll just yeah, watch it on be, peacock that's, yeah i wonder what their setup's going to be because they only have that screen in right field and that's like i i, I yeah. they might have to, to they, they, yeah, they'll have to import some thing. stuff yeah they're going to have to import their own thing. But, you know, I was like, it's very important that I wanted this and this and this because I think the other worst thing that could happen is I'd be like seated in a section that's near a ring post where there's an objective thing that you can't get past because the re mm -hmm. ropes, I, I, trust me, you can get over it. It's fine. The one thing I will tell you right now, and I'm letting this all be broadcasted. If you bring a sign, <laughs> I was <gonna> ask. <laughs> if you bring a sign, I will fucking say something. <laughs> I did that. Once when I went to the SmackDown Christmas tour a couple of years ago, um, with girl I was seeing, and some and it was a good main event. Jinder Mahal, John Cena, um, AJ Styles in a tables match. And the thing is, she is a big Cena fan, and she was putting the sign up, and no one want to say something. This is like the main event of the house show with some great legends, and I I was like I'm like put down the sign. No one can see. Stop being selfish. And I said it like that. I, I don't bring in the fight. I don't use the curse words when I when I stand up with people. I'm gonna give you guys some free advice here. In this world where people come in with their high morality and they have their own intentions and they, they, their objective is for them to come out on top, they're usually on a pedestal. That's the interaction that I met with professions and with pro says and stuff like that, where they they are inconsiderate because they want something desperately, whether it be in fandom or in life. Right? Don't kick them off the pedestal. They can always come back. Destroy the pedestal so they can rise it again. So don't curse at them. Don't yell. I'm just saying it's like you're being selfish right now. Other people are behind you. We want to watch because what it does is it makes them realize that there's a whole other group of people out there and not that special. Mm -hmm. It's psychology 101. And mm -hmm. believe me, I'll bring that January 27th. If it's a seven-year-old, I'm telling that to the seven-year-old. If it's a seven-year-old, I'm telling that to the seven-year-old. I'm not here to play around. This okay. is my time, my mm -hmm. service. I spent you know, my damn money. My money, my enjoyment, my outlet, my 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 excitement. I cannot speak to you. I, I was I was incorrigible with the chat of how happy i was and excited and like i you know yeah, work. it was, it was uh it was a dilemma at one point you were because uh, there was a lot of trepidation on the part of of your paralegal uh as to whether you wanted to go or not where you, how much money you wanted to spend and yeah and then when i realized i was stupid and i was just in the wrong aspect of i was able to switch up but that's my one advice if you bring a sign first off the wrestlers ain't gonna read it especially when you're not yeah. front front row like we're front rowish you know row 21 which trust me it's not as uh too far as you think it is you know what i mean like if you guys have ever been in concerts it's just about feet and you know we're american so we don't count in feet we're okay we do count in feet but we're you know illiterate so it's fine we're, we're in florida kids but um i i will be that person you can jump up and down. You can raise your hands and pump it. That's the excitement. You bring a sign, hmm. we're gonna have some words. Mm -hmm. You're right. gonna get. You're gonna get the hundred percent words. But I am excited. And that is what I got for you in the cage. Just the bombshell, the over the top rope. And I think I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it now. I think what we're gonna do after when we're doing, we have to do previews for the cage on the pay per view and stuff like that. But I think what I'm going to have to do leading up to the Rumble for the next couple episodes before we go on break, because I think we're going to go on break probably by the time we get to the Rumble, usually, right? That, when, when, it, when is it? When is uh January 27th. January 27th. Yeah, we usually come back around that time. I mean, well, actually, yeah. no, I think we'll be back because we, we take it like in like the first or second week of December and then we come back like – Mid January yeah. during the NFL playoffs, Perfect. because also we have playoffs and we have basketball. Because we, too. I think it would be good to to come in and do like your your big preview mm -hmm. of it, and then you can do your big review. Well, I think what I'm going to do is in the coming weeks, because I got two and a half months of work with, I'm going to revisit some famous Royal Rumble matches. 
mm. and just give you a study on it. Because originally we were going to go when it was slow, going to be like, oh, these are wrestlers to highlight. No, no. Because now I'm in it. I'm going to be like, these are the Royal Rumbles I watch. And I, I'm telling you now, man, if I have to watch Royal Rumbles during the dark eras, I'm going to do it. Mm. And the dark eras mean the time of wrestling that I didn't watch because I purposely said I did some of that in the pandemic era because Royal Rumbles are very like you don't have to watch like certain moves because they're spot fest really. But um, I'm mega excited. It's going to be a royal experience. And that's all I got for you this week on the cage. All right. Well, I think that's it for us, everybody. Bye. Take care. Don't bring Rumble.